Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Show. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Hezekiah Walker. Bang, bang. Ah. Hello, sir. Idiots gang. What's happening? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Another day, man. How was your week? Man, my week was good. How was your week? You do anything? Fun? I just chill with the wife, man. Okay. Just chill with the wife. We had a nice little weekend together. Did y'all watch anything? <sighs> nah, actually. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't. I didn't. Did you? My wife made me watch Blink twice. Is that a movie? It's a movie. I watched Blink twice, and I watched it twice because I fell asleep the first night, and I watched it again the second night. Okay. And my see, this is this is when you like it's like a it's not a house divided, but I don't fuck with horror movies. The reason I don't really fuck with horror movies is because I don't pay people to scare me. Mm. Like, that's something I get from my dad. My dad used to always say that. And it never made no sense till I got older. Mm -hmm. If you deal with anxiety and stuff like that, why would you pay somebody? Yeah. Like, why would you go out of your way to do things that you know gonna fuck with you? So, yeah. We're watching it on Amazon Prime. We spent in 1999. This movie, directed by Zoe Kravitz, it's made like 70 plus million dollars at the box office already, right? This movie is literally like somebody said, I'm gonna make a biopic movie about Jeffrey Epstein and Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it all happens on a private island. Mm. I don't want to give shit away, mm. but it's it's ridiculous. Good movie? It, I mean, it's good. Yeah, it's good. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 I be looking at things, right? Like, when I watch certain movies, I'm like, oh, okay. I don't like that because that could actually happen. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? Because that's the, scary, the, the scariest thing about horror movies nowadays. It's just movies. It's thrillers that could actually happen. Oh, you're talking about like Black Mirror. Yeah, when you think yeah. about a movie like Don't Look Up or when you think about uh, Leave the World Behind. Yeah. Like this shit could actually happen. Blink Twice is the same shit. This ain't no fucking supernatural thrillers. Ain't no Freddy Kruegers, no Jason. Yeah, ain't yeah. No, these are actual just humans doing wild ass shit to people. Yeah, that's and when true. you got motherfucking, you know, daughters and women that you love, you don't want to see this shit. No, that's now I got to good... think about this shit for two weeks and try to get this out of my brain. So it stays with you. What? The things that scare you stay with you. Yes, especially things that could actually happen. Right. I think we live in a world right now where your brain and your mind don't necessarily know the difference. Yeah. Because our cortisol levels are always getting shot through the roof because we're always on our phones. We're always looking at screens. Yeah. It's always some shit happening. Even the shit that's really happening in the world, yeah. shows we're questioning. Yeah. So when you're watching a movie, your brain registers the same way. Like, wait a minute. Is this... Yeah. Is this like a video? Is this a video that was taped in real life? Like your I feel like your brain cannot uh determine whether something is real or fake. Or it's fake. And you just carry that anxiety with you. Yeah. Sounds like this movie's pretty good. I mean, it's yeah. worth watching. It's made over 70 million dollars in the box. You ain't seen this shit? No. Nah. Nah. It's like get out for sexism, I think, and 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 misogyny <laughs> and chauvinism. <laughs> it it What's chauvinistic about it? I don't even want to tell I don't want to. I mean, I could, because if you haven't seen it. I mean, it came out, what, two years ago? No, this shit came out like this. The shit just made $7 million in the box office this year. Oh, is it in theaters now? I think it's still in theaters, but you know, the shit comes on theaters and it comes on Amazon Prime. You ain't seen Blink twice either, Chris? None of y'all seen this shit? They made all this money? Fuck. Yeah. Channing Tatum stars in it? Oh, shout out to Channing Tatum, man. It, it, it really don't make no sense. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, anybody that's seen Blink twice know what the fuck I'm talking about. I don't want to give it away for nobody who hasn't. Give me another week. I always my rule is once a movie makes over hundred million dollars, then, then I blow up. Then you. Then yeah. I talk about it. It's, only, it's made like seventy eight or some shit like that. So twenty more million, we'll talk about it. What else going on, man? I feel like right now, as the elections approaching, everything just becomes politics. Everything. Every conversation becomes politics. Uh, I mean, we're we're, we're yeah. thirty. How many days? Thirty two. Isn't that crazy? It feels weird, bro. Talk to me. What do you it mean? It felt like in 2020, there was more of a sense of urgency. Like, it, it don't feel like we got an election happening in 30 days. And it's like, when the vice president became at the top of the ticket, it shifted, right? Like, it was, whoa. But it, all of that, I, that I told people, all of that excitement was in the party. The energy is not there. Joe Biden was dead, guys. Yeah. <laughs> let, 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 let's talk about Joe yeah. Biden was dead. Are you saying? So when you go from dead to a post. To alive. You think it's a party. Yeah, like, it's, oh. It's exciting. It's like, yeah. no, actually, this is just how it's supposed to be. 
You're supposed to be excited <laughs> for the person that's right for president. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody was excited. We were all like, I'm not doing this shit. Right. Motherfuckers was like, oh, you know, I'm going to vote for him, even if he's a corpse. If we got to drag him down to the poll. Bill Maher used to literally say I would vote for Biden if his head was in blue goo and all types of wild shit like that. Right. So it's like there was no real excitement. But now that you have an actual candidate who has a pulse, yeah. you're like, oh. But now we're 30 days out and you realize like, but this person still has to go out there and win. Yeah. And on the ground, it, I just don't know where things could go. I think everybody's disconnected. Like, I don't even feel excitement. <laughs> I, do you feel it? Like, I mean, I think you're disconnected, but... No, I mean, I, the culture, the zeitgeist. Like, I just... There was... I felt the immediate connection when Kamala decided... Or when they decided Kamala was going to run. Mm -hmm. I felt the spike. I felt the enthusiasm. I'm very sensitive to zeitgeist, right? Yeah. I'm very sensitive to culture. And I'm like, whoa, this is weird. Why is everybody coming out here supporting this girl that nobody cared about? Now, dissipated. It's not there for Trump, and it's not there for Kamala. We, it's just not there. We talked about this it's last week, weird. right? And, 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 and I thought about something. Because remember, I forgot how you worded it. You said, uh, it's hard to meet the moment, right? I think that's what you said. It's hard. Yeah, to, yeah you were talking. You was like, it's hard. For, you, there's only a few presidents that have met the moment. I think what we oh, should have oh, said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there's only a few captured presidents the culture, who have won yeah. the culture. Yeah, it's captured the who culture. Won the culture war. Yeah. Well, like, well, yeah, won the war, but also like spoke to what people actually need. And I think it's way easier. Like when Trump was coming up in that first election, the first time that he that he ran, it he was existing in like a suppressive culture, meaning, hey, don't make any jokes. Don't say any bad things. Hey, everybody be good. Be polite. Don't say anything sexist. Don't say anything racist. And the wokeness had extended itself, just like culture's pendulum swing. It just extended itself a little too far. And everybody was a little exhausted by it, but nobody was saying it because there was, you know, a punitive measure taken if you said it. And then he came out and he just started saying it. And then people were like, oh, that's refreshing. That's gone now. With yeah, Twitter, you can say whatever the fuck you want. So we don't need that. There's not this... Um, release that you feel when you see it. I'll tell you something about 2016, too. We Trump really probably should have been bought up on a Rico, yo. What and do you I'll mean? I'll tell you why. Trump is the reason that the Me Too movement took out so many people. Wait, why? Because they couldn't get Trump. When Trump oh, won... Oh, <laughs> like, so they went after everybody oh else. Oh, my God. Go back and watch. Like, 2016, it led to the woman's... Bar. It led to all of these different things. Because you got to think, Hillary was a woman. She lost... To this guy, right? Yeah. This guy who's saying all this wild shit, doing all this wild shit, grabbing yeah. by the pussy. Okay, instant rebellion. It, the Women's March literally was one of the biggest marches ever immediately when he became uh, I think president-elect. So all of that shit that we saw was a rebellion because he won the goddamn election. That, that Women's March was like Big. January 6th. Bigger. Yeah. Way bigger. Yeah. Women's March, what do you feel, was bigger than January 6th? What? In terms of the devastation that it caused. <laughs> in, terms of, <laughs> no, in, terms of, in terms of the devastation and <laughs> destruction <laughs> to you. humanity. I'm talking about the first Women's March that Tamika Mallory. Oh, when they were wearing Red, the hats. And yeah. Uh, Linda Sawsword, when they organized. Yeah, that yeah, shit was That, was that, shit, was that shit was crazy. That shit was bad. Yeah. All over the country. <laughs> the amount of people that got hurt. The <laughs> men, there was no security. A lot of men got hurt. A lot of men got hurt. Really. A lot of men lost their lives to that Women's March. <laughs> we can't let them women get out there and march. <laughs> Taylor? <laughs> Taylor, what we said? Taylor, all memes necessary, Taylor. You know? Yeah, come on, you gotta distract us. We don't wanna talk yeah. about politics. Come Tell on, us man. what well, else is going just, on in the just world. Just one thing. Do you feel that maybe people are less interested because they're not doing as many debates? See, we're back no. to politics. Nah, nah but normally they do. Politics. Normally they do like three or four. Nah. We're not interested because they're not tapping into the culture. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think Americans don't even know what they want. I think everybody is so confused. That's There's true. so much information out there. They don't know what's bothering them. They don't know what they care about. They go, oh, I care about inflation. Oh, I care about prices. Like, obviously, those things matter. The closest thing that everybody is kind of connected to, I feel, is is the border immigration. That's the closest thing. And even then, there are so many people that are detached from it. I think it depends where you live. Of course, that's what I'm saying. Like any of y'all 
for saying that I was spreading MAGA messaging in February what? just because I told people the border was going to be an issue come November. Oh, you did. You did do that. Fox News asked me a simple question. Yeah. Charlemagne, do you think the border is going to be an issue come November? And I said yes. It was yeah. February. I said yes because for the first time in my life, people in my community are telling me that they have a problem. Yeah. Right? You got activists in Chicago telling me, hey, these people are coming over here and they're getting the resources that you know people on the side Outside that are poor and disenfranchised and homeless yeah. people aren't even getting. I got people in New York City literally telling me. I'm, I don't want to say who the person is, but it's a, a, a it's somebody I know very well. Just a, <laughs> a guy that works in the city that I see every day. Just an everyday working class guy coming to me in tears, telling me about these gangs that are coming in from the border, fucking up his neighborhood. Mm. Like this was in February. Mm. People calling the radio station upset at Mayor Adams because Mayor Adams let the migrants uh, stay in a school overnight and they had to make the kids stay home and do remote learning. Mm -hmm. People have were, been complaining about this shit. Mm -hmm. All I did was repeat what my people tell me on an everyday basis. And y'all said I was spread, spreading MAGA messaging. Now, what's the, what, the number, what's the number one or two issue? It's the economy and the goddamn border. Yeah, that is the... Yeah, that That's is why the... I went white. I'm sorry, I went all white from now on. I'm a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> what does that gotta do? With? I know. <laughs> yeah. Shit don't gotta mean nothing no more. That is the truth. That is the problem. Everything I just said <laughs> makes me a virgin. I am pure. Is say what I'm whatever to say. you want. Say whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Mm. Okay. Nice. What is this, Taylor? Uh, why is it Taylor, we missed you last week. Oh. I didn't. I know. I was talking, I was I talking to last kids week. last week. We you said we kids? didn't want to do no politics, and Taylor pulled up Reverend Al Sharpton showing off his funny moves <laughs> with New York Governor Kathy hey. Hochul. Oh, hey, hey. hey. That's the air got him going to jail dance. <laughs> <laughs> him and Kathy is going crazy. Why are they so happy when Eric got him going to jail, man? Like they just, yeah. Why are they so happy? Imagine being Eric Adams yeah. watching this. What is yeah. so happy? Why are you so happy, Ralph? I'm starting to look like Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, dude. You know yeah. yeah. I, sh I showed my wife this last night, and I was like, why is the Reb always doing this dance? And my wife said, that man is 70 years old. If that man wants to dance, let him dance. and that makes him feel good, let him. I said, you know what? You are absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And when I hit 70, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the Reverend Al shopping. <laughs> I promise you. Reverend Al. It's going to be a dance. Al, listen, Al probably ain't going to be around when I'm 70. God bless, right? <sighs> Yeah. God bless, I'll make it to 70. Huh. I know I'm going to make it to 70. I'm going to be 101. Huh. I'm going to do that same dance with the same suit on. Uh-huh. Taylor, remind me. <laughs> hey, remember what you said, okay? All right, when I turn 70, I'm going to hit that shit just like, ooh. Hmm. Do it. You know he learned all that shit from James Brown. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, remember that was James Brown right-hand man. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn, he was remember so I got his head burned because of James Brown. I think a lot of us did. <laughs> Chris, you ain't know that. I yeah, think. I know Chris know that. Yeah. He said he wouldn't get rid of his perm until James Brown got rid of his perm. That that's was the right. deal. Really? Wow. That's right. And James Brown died with his, so guess what, Rev? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to it. That's right. Hold on to it. <laughs> All right, Chris, you out? I'm out. Taylor, you said you had to talk to the kids last week? Yes, sir. Why did you have to talk to the kids? I saw you looking like a substitute teacher <sighs> from Abbott Elementary. Oh my God. What was the walk I did? <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't no do reason. no walk. Yo, Taylor was trying to relate to the kids, so right? Crazy. I don't know what she was trying to do. She might have been trying to hit the... What's that shit called? The girl? That's so crazy. What's that, that shit called? The gritty. The gritty, right? So she comes in front of the kids and she goes... Oh, where do you God. see? I'm like, what the where do you fuck see that? that? Where's the video at? It was on your story. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You tried to hit the gritty to impress <laughs> yeah. the kids, what the and then flops. <laughs> Yo. It's so crazy how you just be making shit up. That is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> that is so embarrassing. The crazy part is the classroom looks so big, and Taylor looks so little in the classroom. <laughs> so I had to visit three schools. Okay. So one of them was class. The other, the other two were the whole auditorium. Why and do you have to go back to school? They wanted me to talk to them about my sound design and everything. So, oh, that's and I cool. actually put in with Breakfast Club. Like I showed them like the viral moments and how producing was involved with it and stuff. So, like with the Drake one, which I mean with Soldier Boy, when we say Drake, I mean they that knew sound about any of that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little surprisingly, yeah. They don't know. I don't think they know necessarily like the show itself, but they seen the clips yeah, on TikTok yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. So. How old are they? It was juniors and seniors in high school. 
That's that shit's crazy. I was walking in the barbershop the other day, and this dude, this is a high school over there, and the kid kept looking at me, and he goes, yo, man, ain't you Charlemagne the guy? And I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, man, my mom reads all your books. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm an old man. We're washed, like, bro. You know what I'm saying? We're washed. You know, when a 30 year old comes up to you and says, I've been listening to Breakfast Club for 15 years. Sheesh. I know I've been listening since I was 15. I know I was getting old. I was, I was playing basketball. This was years ago. I was playing basketball. This kid fouled me. I said, Foul. He goes, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> when that kid call, call me sir Hilarious. on the court. But on Dion Cole's stand up special, he said, when young people call you Mr., <laughs> it's over. Woo! <laughs> that okay, shit is Mr. different, bro. Excuse me, Mr. <laughs> that shit is different. Don't they do that at your daughter's school? Don't they say Mr.? I want to be called Mr. I'm yeah. a grown ass man. <laughs> Fuck these 15, 16 years old. Call me by my first fucking name. What do they call you? <laughs> Mr. Mr. McKelvey. <laughs> God damn right. I don't like that shit. I don't do that shit. And then, you know, my daughter goes to school with a lot of white people. Y'all all call y'all parents by y'all first name. I don't call my parents by their first name. You don't, actually. Most white people don't. Them little white kids. Yes, call. you do. I'm not calling my parents do? by their first name. Oh, when you're, like, talking about them. It's mom and dad. Oh, no, they no, don't. No, like, when you're talking about them to other people, oh, you, yeah. you call like, them by I'll, their first I'll call my dad Larry. Yeah, we don't yeah. do that. We say mom. Mom, dad. Yeah. <laughs> you like, I, I was speaking to my mom. Yes. I would say I was speaking to my dad. Yeah. But if I'm describing my dad... It's still... Larry Legend. Larry Legend. <laughs> Long Dick Larry. Long Dick motherfucking Long Larry. Dick Larry, the grandfather clock. Is she long for real? Why do you know this about crazy. your father? Crazy, crazy see, Long you, Dick. This is what you don't understand about sons. When you grow up in... See, oh, you did. I am about to say something. But you're right. I was stereotyping. You did grow up in your <laughs> right? Yes, so, exactly. So, like, stop. So, so Listen, when you grow up... Don't, you grow don't up, stereotype <laughs> on a podcast, Charlamagne. <laughs> God forbid you stereotype on a podcast. When you grow up with your father, right, and your father walks around in his drawers as a young man, you Gosh. looking like, damn, I want to have that dick one day. Yeah. Whoa. My dad, <laughs> my dad would only wear his shirt. Like he would walk out to no, pee I from his room, and he would look you, crazy. Man. Yeah, so he just wears his shirt like one of them little dogs. So he would basically come out, and then his dick would just be flopping. Yeah, my shit don't. My shit, I still don't Boom. feel like. But you know what? Boom. It is? Boom. You know what? Boom. It is, they used to crazy. they used to wear underwear. Huh? They wore underwear. We wear boxer briefs. Oh, nah, my dad. He wore nothing. Just finished. You know? Oh, he would just come out long dick like that, raw. That's it. Oh, shit. I think it's because our dad used to wear fruit in the looms. Mm -hmm. So when you wear underwear, your yeah. package looks bigger in fruit and looms. When you wear boxer briefs, your shit don't look like that. No, he would come out Winnie the Pooh. Now, if y'all want to <laughs> fill out, we can wear, we can start wearing fruit in the looms. <laughs> nah, it's not nah. even like that. You need to have, he had soft long dick. A lot of y'all don't know what that is. Yeah, I definitely know. <laughs> you got soft little dick, yeah, and then grow. maybe you grow. I'm a grower, not a show. I he got soft, long dick. Damn. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm saying damn because I'm envious of that shit. I see some, we were just playing video games. My dad walked through. My friends here. Boom. Ain't no, boom. Man. The water oh, man. starts to ripple. You know, like in Jurassic Park. The That's what I'm saying, boom, man. Boom. boom. Let that goddamn D-Rex come out, man. <laughs> D-Rex. <laughs> D -Rex. That motherfucking D-Rex. D-Rex. Let that D-Rex D-Rex. I want a D-Rex, man. <laughs> I want a, I've always wanted a Jurassic Johnson. The D-Rex is Listen, crazy. Listen, I want a Jurassic Johnson. If... <laughs> 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 If they really do start uh, doing DDLs, <laughs> I would think about it. Wow. I thought you said you're eight and a half inches. Yeah, but it's that length when you soft. You want a soft, long dick? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come out the shower, yo. That shit, like... Why? Yeah, I'll never forget one. i never forget. I don't want to say my homeboy name. I'll never forget my homeboy in Columbia, South Carolina, <sighs> way back in the day. Say so he called his girl cheating. And he said he caught his girl cheating with this Jamaican dude. Uh oh. And he said he he just he said he walked in the house and he said at first he was scared because he thought she was getting her killed. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like he cocked his gun and went running in the room because he thought it was something going on. Yeah. And he said when he busted in with the gun, this Jamaican motherfucker yeah. with these long dreadlocks yeah. jumped up. And he said first thing I noticed was the long dreads. Second thing I noticed was that long dick. <laughs> he said, that shit was this like dick. And he said the man dick was so big that he just told the dude, man, <laughs> just leave. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn. You should be happy with your boyfriend dick. 
Happy with my what? Your boyfriend dick. My boyfriend dick? Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> you guys never heard of boyfriend dick? No, what is that? boyfriend dick? <laughs> I, know, I know you don't know. <laughs> don't be saying shit like that in this age of freak-offs, man. <laughs> you spread out rumors it's get spread. It's like, the basically, fuck you mean? I be happy like, with my boyfriend dick. I got yeah. a boyfriend. <laughs> you guys never heard of it for real? Mm-hmm. No. Is this like average? Is that like... Wow. <laughs> When did eight and a half become eight and a half is not average? Did inflation happen with dicks? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is eight and a half is average? That's what that's. Hey Trump, bring that down. The GDP Trump, bring, up on dicks. bring dicks down to five inches again, and you are all present. Okay. <laughs> Imagine if that's what GDP stood for. Yeah. Growing, <laughs> growing dick population. Shit like that. What the fuck? What do you mean, boyfriend dick? Uh, <laughs> Let me see, like, let me see if they have it. Wearing You're just making shit no, up, man. Look, no, it's a there's real no thing. way eight and a half inches is a. I'm not eight and a half, dick. by the way. I thought you eight and a half no, in the summer. No, seven inches, three fourths. Eight when it's warm. Okay. Still, that's a good dick. <laughs> Urban Dictionary says. Urban yeah. Dicks. There's a dictionary. Can you look at the white dictionary first if we're looking at dick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, matter of fact, go go, ride every go to the Chinese just... dictionary. Look. I just... <laughs> no, <laughs> look. The kind of you know somebody so funny. OG Brian, they listen to this, they say, man, they don't even do dick segments no more. They just talk about dicks. <laughs> 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 Yo, get a, I need you to get off Urban Dictionary. No, I need no, you to this go is the right definition of it, though. Go to Indian Dictionary. Go to Turban oh, Dictionary. That's a great definition. Boyfriend sure. dick. Nice. The kind of dick you can ride every night because it fits just right. Yeah. This boyfriend dick makes me feel like Goldilocks. It's just right. First of all, they got that from me. I've been saying that shit. <laughs> what, Goldilocks? What? Baby Bear's porridge, baby. This is Baby Bear's porridge. It's just right. Fucking right. I've been saying that. I got baby bear's porridge penis. Okay? It's just <laughs> fucking right. All yeah, right? Which, I mean, what a, you don't want a girl to say that. You don't want a girl to say that. No, you, yeah, like, you don't. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Lego. <laughs> nah, you want it to be spinning on the top of that shit. Nah. Come on. You want to go a little bit. You perfect want there to be great. Like that much more. Perfect Perfect keeps you in the game forever. Say what? Perfect yeah. keeps you in the game forever. Yeah, no, I understand. So does bigger. Yeah, bigger <laughs> nah, also. Nah, that you ain't know, true, yo. Wait, a, no. I feel like a lot of girls don't want... Ever, no. A lot of girls don't want big dicks how you th- be making it seem, Charlemagne. Like, they oh, don't. Who is Charlemagne? So I, what that got to do with this? So because how you yeah, want... Yeah, you do. You are a size yeah. queen a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you are a size queen. You no. love big dick. You Every single day you talk about big dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you talk about is big dick. <laughs> we talk about just dick in general. But you talk about big dick. Yo, you how like do we even shit. get on dicks? <laughs> you, won't, you, you won't get off of <laughs> Rock it. Oh yo. Down on me. Yo. Down on me. Okay. Taylor, 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 come Speaking on, of, yo. What else on. we got? I know Taylor. you don't want to talk about politics again, but did you want to go over it? Transgender imprisonment? This First is more all, politics? No, I'm going to tell you something. This, this was a very effective ad. What was the ad? And I'll tell you why it was effective. It wasn't because of the ad, per se. It's because of where the ad was placed. All right. Imagine watching football on a regular Sunday. Right? Mm-hmm. And you just laying there, you minding your business, just watching the game, and then you just hear this shit. Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners. Come on, man. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Even access to what? The media was shocked. Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners and illegal aliens. Every transgender inmate would have access. Kamala's for they, them. President Trump is for you. I know Trump. That's fire. This that's this so, that's racist. fire. No, that was fire. Imagine Kamala's watching they, football. Them. Trump is for you while you're, you're watching, watching football. football. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. just a man. Yeah. You're at home watching football. What if you don't know shit about the election? As you said, people disconnect their opinions. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> like, that's a very effective ad. Right. How do they do the sex changes in there? <laughs> like, is it like how the inmates tattoo each other? Like, they got to rig a little thing. <laughs> I, I need to see a prison sex change immediately. I thought they were going in as a transgender, though. But they said they're doing the sex changes in there, which means that they must be providing the surgery. <laughs> Imagine any sense. Like, <laughs> how does that know. work? I think they're saying they're gonna support like the pills that they had to take. Well, but, that's a little different. But who gets the who gets to hit the new pussy on the block? Oh my god! Like, nah, they gotta transfer you. 
Say what? They got to transfer you. Which block do they put you in? D block. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. We still got it. It's easy, easy, bro. We still still gonna get these jokes (laughs) off. Don't think we not. Listen, they listen. I don't. My thing. Stockton and Malone over here. Easy. (laughs) The thing with this commercial, right, is that it was effective because it happened during football. Number one, this ain't my issue. So it don't bother me. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna not vote, right? I, by the way, I'm not even. I don't even care enough to research this. It just sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. You watching football and you just. I'm like, well, I don't want my taxpayer dollars going to some shit like did that. You, did you? Uh, did you ask her about it? No. Why didn't you ask her about it? I haven't. I don't haven't spoken to the vice president. But you just asked her, like, yo, are you for chopping off these inmates' dicks? Oh, no, yeah. If I, uh, I don't even know if that's... Listen, as, an, as a person in America, an American yeah. citizen, do I give a fuck about this? If I sat down with her for a conversation, do I care enough about this to ask about it? I mean, yeah. You think so? I just want to know if they... Because you said the yeah. advertisement was... Yeah, I pro- yeah you're right. I, because like it's, because it happened during football, mm-hmm. I would probably want her to clarify that. But... I mean, just for funsies, you would want to know. But then also, too, man, if you think about it, Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Mm. You kind of don't want to mess up the prisoners' fun. Uh, Okay, so there is an argument here. Like, you're putting more pussies in the penitentiary system. yeah, And then that might pacify them a little bit. They might be a little bit more calm, some pussy, some fresh box. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. More pussy in the penitentiary. Brand new. Brand new. Brand new. No you, mileage on it. Have you seen white? It? What why why I got white. Be white? Virgin pure. Yeah, you know, okay. You dress like you on wildin' out every week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, no mileage on it. No, it's, so it's a it fresh is bomb. Box. Done. Come on, man. Who gets to hit that? The biggest guy on the yard. Oh, he just oh wow. But you still gotta finesse it though. What do you mean? Like, how do you smooth that? You gotta have a conversation with me. You just ain't gonna get none of this new pussy. Give him some canteen. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What's up? What you? What we doing? Yeah. We still we on the yard. You still gonna court me? Yeah, you gotta court me. You gonna court me? Cause you, yo, you the you the. How about to say you the man in prison? (laughs) (laughs) You in prison? You the man in prison? If you got a new pussy? Nah, that's fire, bro. A new pussy? Oh my lord. Have you seen those, those those experiments when they give the inmates like uh, uh like some like cats? Have you seen that? No. no. You haven't seen this? Mm. So it's like a program where they give the inmates cats and all of a sudden everybody stops fighting and in order to get a cat you have to be in good behavior and they all have the cat. They love the cats and they take care of them. You haven't seen this? No. You don't watch prison shows? <laughs> yeah. I have. I never seen that one. That's interesting. You probably put a little pull little honey little honey in your butthole. What? Lay on your stomach. <laughs> you? The cat got that rough ass tongue. So why? You know? Why your butt? The cat get to licking, get to licking on that butt. Imagine you walk in your cell. Your cell, he got his fucking legs in the air like this. That little cat. Just... What would you do? You know why they want a cat in prison? <laughs> they want some pussy. <laughs> I mean, they yeah. go get some pussy. Yes. Man. What's this pussy cat? I mean, maybe she should get behind this 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 policy. I did look it up, though. I, it says uh, during her time as a senator and vice presidential candidate, she has supported LGBTQ rights broadly, but her stance on specific issues like taxpayer-funded gender confirmation surgeries for prisoners has evolved over time. As AG of California, her office defended the state in a legal case where a transgender inmate sought gender confirmation surgery. Initially, her office argued against the inmate's request. However, Harris later clarified that her defense was based on her duty as AG to represent the state's position in court and not necessarily reflective of her, of her personal views. She has since expressed support for ensuring the rights and health care needs of transgender individuals including prisoners, are met. That's what I think it is, but they're making it seem like... They make it seem like they're chopping it off exactly, or scooping it out, but exactly. it's really getting the pills that they were already getting. Yes, yeah. it says the Biden-Harris administration has advocated for protecting the rights of transgender individuals, including access to necessary health care, though direct statements specifically on the issue of taxpayer-funded surgeries for prisoners have not been a major focus of their administration's policy platforms. Their administration's broader policy support health care access for transgender individuals, but there is no clear explicit stance from Harris herself directly addressing this specific issue in public statements. Mm-hmm. But it's still an effective ad because they know who they're targeting when they play this shit during football, <laughs> college football, NFL, you watching this shit. Later on, you're going to repeat that. Facts. You voting for Kamala? Don't she like a... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 
It's, but yeah, what, whatever. What else we got, Taylor? Taylor. Um, trying to put this like all together. So there. Show the video of you doing the gritty. I never did it. You just made that up. The girlies ain't playing in the gym. Who was that? Light skin Keisha. Who's that? She's on. Um, she's a rapper, but she's also an actress on Power. She's on Power. Yeah, she's one of the students. Like you never Keisha? noticed? Yeah, she's been on it for a couple seasons now. She's not like the main. I must but... not know who Light Skin Keisha is. Then what student is she playing? She must have. What she got on the last two seasons? Maybe the last three. Why are you showing us this? What's your thoughts of it? I think that you need to follow her lead and get in the goddamn gym. <laughs> what the fuck you mean? What's my thoughts on it? I think that you need Taylor, to get in the gym just like her. She looks great. She looks fucking amazing. Salute to Light Skin Keisha. Light Skin Keisha is doing what everybody should be doing. Busting your ass this fall so you can pop out and show motherfuckers come spring in the summer. Kendrick Lamar is doing the Super Bowl in February. Will you be ready? <laughs> oh, Will yeah. you be ready, Taylor? Taylor, that's a good point. Huh? Are you going? Um, I don't know yet. You should, I, I, I hope you watch that video as motivation. <laughs> yeah. Like, the Keisha look good in that video. She like, she working out. Taylor. You say she didn't. I need you to do that. <laughs> you work out. You work out, What do you need me for, to do that for? Why not? It's healthy. I know it's healthy. I am in the gym. We want, Why not? We want you to stay around as long as possible because we love you. <sighs> okay. We want you to develop. You can't be five feet tall and not have muscles, yo. Are you saying that to yourself? Yeah. That's why I oh! <laughs> That's why I work out so much. Oh! You gotta have muscles. Wale! 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 That was crazy. Give him two points. <laughs> give him two points, DJ Wreck. <laughs> give Kur give her, give Taylor two points, DJ Wreck. Why is Lunel so close to that camera, yo? Did you why see you this? Why a picture of Lunel so close to the camera, yo? I think she had a stand-up. And it was no phones, though, so she decided to put this up herself, though. So Let me see. see. What do you mean? Let's see. Salute to Luna. I love Luna, man. Oh, oh no. shit. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Y'all didn't see that? <laughs> no, I ain't see Luna fall like that. Let me text Luna and say, you okay, baby? God damn. Look, Wait. I'm late. I just saw you fall. You okay, baby? Right. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. What did she fall off of? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be doing that, man. Yeah. Especially when you're of a certain age. You scare every fucking body. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you is... fall out. You fall out and don't get up at a certain That's what she's of time. about it. <laughs> I have an exclusive for you. Oh, that was a year ago. I have an exclusive for you. One year ago on September 28, 2023, Netflix released my first... Make it bigger, Taylor, pause. Dave released Chappelle. my first Dave Chappelle produced comedy special entitled Town Business. It was shot at Yoshi's Oak. There were no phones allowed. That is why no one is just behind the scenes footage except me. I have held on to it for a year, but I'm letting you see what only, audience, what only the audience saw that night. One thing about comedy, if you can't laugh at yourself, you have no business doing this for a living. I fucking agree. I will be coming back to Oakland, California on December 27th to headline the iconic Paramount Theater on Broadway. Tickets are on sale now at Ticketmaster. It will be a great way to, wel it will be a great way to welcome the New Year's celebrations. I can only hope and pray that I don't have a repeat of this situation. Watch, and I hope you have a good laugh. God damn. <laughs> it was funny at first, but then you got to make sure she all right, but I'm glad that was a year ago, so she fine. Yeah, she survived. <laughs> you just can't do that. When you a certain age, you just can't be falling, man. People think something wrong. They think you like dead. I, mean, I feel that way Why now. are they fanning her ass, though? They're not fanning she's her not ass. She's not fanning her ass. This is hot. God damn. I think someone's fanning themselves. Oh, I'm trying to figure out okay. what she yeah, tripped like, on. Hey, but why this woman... Why the first, <laughs> go back, Taylor. Why this woman look back like... I know y'all don't expect me to go out there and pick her up. <laughs> like, like, watch this, watch. She fanning her, fanning her, fanning her. Lunell goes out there, fanning, 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 fanning. Lunell falls. The lady looks right at her and looks back like, now who gonna help me pick her up? <laughs> 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 what else we got, Taylor Gang? Taylor Gang. Uh, Taylor Gang. I forgot what you, you... Did you call Usher a domestic terrorist? Is that what you call him? I always call okay. Usher a domestic terrorist. So there's... <laughs> Bless, Bless you. God there's, damn. Um, 
That COVID back. He was back, trying to feed back. <clears throat> your cousin a cherry and her dude was not having it. Who was that, Holly? Yeah. Oh, Holly, Holly. and DDG? Mm-hmm. That's your cousin? Chloe and Holly, yeah. He has a cherry and he grabbed it from Usher. That's all. Wait, what? That's your cousin? Chloe and Holly? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it. Like, a, like actually by blood and marriage, or yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember exactly how it is, but it's the Bailey, like uh, they're the Baileys, where the McKelveys, Bailey McKelveys do a family reunion all the time in South Carolina. Oh wow! A lot of her people are from uh, St. Stephen, South Carolina, which is the town right next to Monk's Corner. So I knew her. her I knew their uncle growing up, Jody. Damn, father a wild boy, man. Wild boy, man. Wild boy. I heard his concerts in uh, L.A. were amazing. He, he, yo, he's good. Uh, Usher is phenomenal. He's, he's just phenomenal. Phenomenal. He's phenomenal. We, we, we was having a conversation on Breakfast Club, and Dion Cole was saying how he went to the Spirit. He was saying how amazing it was, like you were saying. And he was saying, I think it was U2 performing there recently. Oh, the Sphere. Yeah, Sphere, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You two did like, yeah. how big is the Sphere? 80,000 people? No, 18,000. 18,000. Yeah, yeah. So he was saying that they did four nights in a row for five months or some shit like that and Insane. sold out every True. day or whatever it was. And he was asking like, who could do that from like hip hop, mm. R&B, yeah. right? <clears throat> and um, I was like, well, Usher did it, but then I, did, I forgot Usher's show was 5,000 people. Yeah, Drake could do it though. I think I think Drake could do it. Yeah, there are people could do it. The question is like, <clears throat> with the sphere, it's it's more about the spectacle of what's happening around. Like, I think yeah. DJs will have the best music shows there. I don't even think bands. I think it's specifically DJs because you can do so much to distort the music and then you can choreograph that background with the oh. music and everything is mixed together. And with the DJ, essentially, you're doing a lot of the stuff you know, behind the scenes. The production is really where the work is. When you're out there playing, you can, if you want, just press play yeah. and then watch the spectacle unfold. I think that would be a better version. I think the sphere is incredible. I want to go back again. I, I haven't been there. I mean, I want I want to go for a show. I just don't Bro, know what show I would want to go to. It has it to be is. something I want to see, like Beyonce. Uh, it's unbelievable. Everybody says that, yo. It is just unbelievable. Everybody fucking says that. You eyes can't believe what you're we're seeing. It's like really, yeah, it, dude. It's unbelievable. They do like IMAX movies there too, right? So, so yeah, but like IMAX, I don't think does it justice. I'm telling you, this shit is just it's like mind bending. Oh, so you can watch movies in the sphere? They don't have movies. They have a specific thing that's created for it. Because what you need to do is you need to shoot it on such high quality. It takes two days. Like for the UFC thing, it took two days to upload all the data for the videos wow. that played in between the fights. Wow. Two days. The next level of, of, of visual experiences like that is being in places that you feel like you're immersed in it, but you got to feel it. There was movie theaters that started to do that a little bit. With mist. Like, like the mist stuff. and stuff yeah. like that, but you got to feel it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like if, if somebody nuts, like ejaculation, you got to feel like something oh warm my God. and gooey on you. Did you see Lamar Odom with the <laughs> salmon sperm facial speaking? Of sperm? No. Oh my God. That's not that bad. Hey, pull it up, Taylor. <laughs> you got the salmon sperm, sperm spatial. Caviar, right? The fish right? nut on you is kind of crazy. No, though. isn't that caviar? It's just the fish eggs. Caviar is sperm? What's fish eggs? So it's the, it's the women. It's the women, yeah. Hey, I'm just saying, like, if sperm is so good for your face, why not up it up, up it from fish? Well, I think that's why a lot of women look good and as they're older. The happiest women. Taking it to the face. Yeah. What the fuck? And the women who are not aging so gracefully, we know what they do. What, why does he just got... First of all, I, what I don't understand about this, why does this doctor just have fish sperm in a vape pen? <laughs> and why is he just letting this vape pen go all over Lamar's face? Like, you're not even going to put a fucking bib over his shirt? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to let salmon sperm roll off his it face too. and on his shirt? I don't know, man. What's Lamar been up to? We're clearly getting salmon sperm facials. I'm mean, like, yeah, but like... <laughs> Doesn't he have what? a podcast like, It's a nice now? fit Lamar got on right there. I like but that fit. That's like this doctor's trying to get off a new treatment, <laughs> and Lamar's just going there for free. Uh, <laughs> I see. So the I, doctor needs somebody famous yeah, to get the treatment on. When God. I look at stuff like this, it makes me think of, like, milk, right? Okay. Because, like, you know, we drink milk, <laughs> but it's like cow's milk. And it's almond milk. Yeah, I don't understand and, why that's a big deal that we drink cow's milk. Everybody makes a big deal of that. Because we have our own. Why do we grow up 
perfectly healthy, drinking fine milk from the breast of a woman, yeah. only to switch and start drinking the milk of animals. We eat the other parts of the animal. Fine, but why don't we why don't we continue to drink human milk as we Because women older? stop producing it. But they shouldn't have to. Same way they do the cows. Keep the <laughs> keep the pump. The cows only produce it while they have a calf. No, as long as you keep Pumping? As long as you keep somebody sucking on that nipple, yeah. they don't keep producing milk. Well, the cows do, but they only do it while they have a calf. No, and then women they just, do. Yeah, well, eventually it starts to taper off. Like What? It, it's, it's, it's always a woman. You can always keep... <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you can always get into women. My point is, why do <laughs> yeah. we stop drinking human milk? Like, why do we grow up healthy? This shit literally makes us the people we are. Yeah, it is. And it then is we just stop drinking gold. it? Yeah, it's liquid why gold. Why not have human milk in your goddamn cereal? So my point with this is, we know the benefits of human milk. Yeah. There's got to be benefits to human sperm. It's sperm. Yeah. It creates life. It does. If you're going to put any type of sperm on your face, yeah. it should be human. Make America fucking Great gooey again. again. Gooey. <laughs> right? Okay? Make America gooey again. Get back to fucking people taking human sperm in their face. We used to be a proper country. We used to be a country. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny thing to say. You just say something ridiculous and be like, we used to be a, be a proper country. We used to be a real country. That's a funny, that's, that's a funny show. They got women out here reading in public. You know what I'm saying? We used to be a proper country. <laughs> what kind of bullshit is this? I'm on the subway, I see a woman reading a book. We used to be a proper country. Man, old Andrew is going to be so funny. Oh, he's I cannot have his hat just like that, sitting on a park bench in New York. I cannot going wait. Crazy. Going crazy. Back when I was young, I don't even know what happened to prisons. Now. It's a mockery. They made a mockery in prison. We used to be a country where if you wanted a pussy in prison, oh you could get one. Yeah, wait, wait. You gonna, wait. What's going to come to some shit? America going to be like hedonism. You ever been to hedonism? No. Oh, my God. I went to hedonism back in the day. Hedonism is this resort in Jamaica. It's a nudist. It's, it's, parts of it are a nudist That's colony. where you got this penis insecurity from. <laughs> nah, nah, That's nah, what nah, it nah. is. Nah, I was That's killing. Nah, nah, nah. That, that, that shit was literally like, that shit was literally like the male, the men's locker room. It's nothing but the old white men walking around butt naked with the goddamn oh, low, really? with the little Vienna sausage and the big tufts of hair. Yeah. Like like the, the the hair on their dick is longer than their actual dicks. But <laughs> when you when you go to the when you go you to was the, there studying some yo, dick out there. the details I know. Yo, that sounded yo, crazy. Yo. You was there studying crazy, dick, bro. studying dick. Yo. And <laughs> 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 you were studying, yo. You was looking at studying the hair dick length. Is insane. You were looking at the hair length. <laughs> You were looking at the hair <laughs> length. Studying dick? You were studying on, dick. Wait, you're not, you're no, not no. moving studying on Studying dick is wild. The hair was longer <laughs> than the... What did it look like? No, y'all been in it. Y'all seen that before. Like Gizmo from Gremlins. Nah. <laughs> These dicks be having way more hair than Gizmo had. Studying dicks is crazy. How much hair did it have? Was it curly or straight? It's always like that. These old white men be having these big tufts of hair. Yeah. And just... <laughs> Nothing. Clitoris. <laughs> it's the truth, man. It's like a little fuzzy clitoris. Ah! You like what the fuck? You like, ah! <laughs> you like what the fuck is happening out so, there? So, so you would be angry when you're looking at them. You're just pissed. You're like, he's like, why is it so No, he's like, why the fuck he got so much confidence to be walking around like that? Oh. So you go to hedonism. I don't even know if hedonism is still open in Jamaica. I'm assuming it is. But you go to hedonism. Yeah. Some, it, it, some of the parts of it is where people walking around naked. But literally, everybody there is just fucking. They have hammocks hanging from the trees and, and all types of shit. Like you can literally wake up, walk outside, and somebody will just be fucking right then and there. That's what America's going to be like in, in a minute. Really? Watch. So we got under who's America? Under Kamala's America? Just America, America, period. No, Any, we got to put a stop. Anything, we need some more conservative. Anything is going to be going. They're going to be in the fucking parks fucking, yo. No. Listen. No. <laughs> you ever seen two dogs just going at it in the park? You're going to be sitting on the bench with your hat like that. <laughs> saying, we used to butt fucking private. <laughs> okay. Have some popcorn. <laughs> Eat some sunflower seeds. <laughs> Hey, Back in the day. That was a time when freak-offs were illegal in this country. <laughs> okay. It was a time when you at least buy some baby oil if you were going to butt fuck in the park. <laughs> this is disgusting. These people are doing it dry. They're butt fucking dry. 
God Hold damn. on. Wait, wait, where you God going? Where damn. you going? You got an idea. I saw you perk up. No, I was just, I was thinking, butch might get wet in the future. You might not need it. Charlemagne. Hey, we're an evolving species. Charlemagne. Humans are evolving. Char we used to be a country, we Charlemagne. We used to be a fucking country. If you wanted to butt fuck, you had to earn it. You had to earn it. Now you got these wet butts. <laughs> back in my day, back, back in my day, <laughs> back in my day, butts were full of shit. Remember, remember my day when butts was full of duty and gay guys had to earn it. It was Shawshank Redemption when you were a gay man trying to get your nut off. You had to crawl through miles of poop oh my like God. Andy Dufresne. This guy's crazy. <laughs> Now these 20, 50 butts. These 20, 50 butts actually get wet. Dripping with saliva. <laughs> <laughs> this is despicable. Well, we used to be a country. Oh, we, we used, used to, be, we a used to be a goddamn country, man. Taylor, we used to be a country, man. Uh, we used to be well, a this, I don't know. I feel like we should go to the ad because... <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> I, I was going go to go to honorable mentions. Yeah, we cooking right now. <laughs> we should, uh, yeah, but y'all can't do honorable mentions after that. So we can't do what? So let's go what? to an ad. Oh, <laughs> we, can't. we can't do what? Let's so go let's to an ad. Need, what kind of statue? <laughs> All right. We used to be a, we used to be a podcast. Let's do a couple of <laughs> I remember when we used to be a podcast. We could make fun of anything. Oh, not that? Right after, you can't go right after that. No. Oh, we shit. We, got, we do got to talk about the Diddy case. There's been an update. Yeah. What is it? 120 new cases. <laughs> 120 <laughs> new cases. Uh, exactly 60 men and 60 women. No, right here. Allegedly. Equal opportunity, man. Um, this Hunt, what is that song? Uh, 99 bottles of baby <laughs> on the wall. No, 99, 99 bottles. Let's look at the ads and come back One to that. One fell down. Toss it around. All right. What is the song? How does it go? <laughs> but how does the actual? Now here my balls of beer in the wall. Now here my balls of beer. beer. Take one, one down, pass, pass it around. Now here my balls of beer in the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's a good song. Listen, okay, we're all grown ups here. You know, some of us bringing life into this world. You gotta get serious about your finances. It's not just about you anymore. It's not just about your girl anymore. You have a family you have to take care of, or you're making a big move. Something in your life where you have to take your finances 100% seriously. We've all hit a point where we realize it was time to make some serious money moves. You gotta take control of your finances by using Chime, a checking account, with features like no maintenance fees, fee-free overdraft up to $200, or getting paid up to two days early with direct deposit. You can learn more at chime.com slash idiot. I'm telling you, Chime is what is going to make it work, all right? Chime helps you make progress with fee-free overdraft up to 200 bucks. Your next deposit is applied to your balance. So you get spotted on debit card purchases with, uh, sorry, you get spotted on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. No monthly fees or maintenance fees. Set up direct deposit and Chime account. After qualifying direct deposit of $200, Chime will notify you to enroll in SpotMe. With an activated debit card, Chime will spot you up to $200 when you exceed your balance. Chime never charges fees for for interest or uh, Chime never charges fees or interest for using SpotMe, okay? Make your fall finances a little greener by working towards your financial goals with Chime. Open your account in two minutes at chime.com slash idiots. That's chime.com slash idiots. Chime feels like progress. It's a mandatory disclaimer. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp. Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Boosts are available to eligible Chime members enrolled in Spot Me and are subject to monthly limits. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com slash discloses for details. Now... The Brilliant Idiots would also like to thank Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less or at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in over 30 states, including California, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy, so your lineup stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play five. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus is guaranteed. Think Justin Jefferson will get more than 82.5 yards next week? You think Christian McCaffrey will run for more than 75.5 yards? I think he's hurt anyway. 
Cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this football season when you and your crew run your game on prize picks. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going to go off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks. Okay? Okay. All right. This week on prize picks, I'm looking at the football board and I'm selecting Dak, Dak Prescott to throw for more than 200 yards. And I'm looking for... C.D. Lamb to have over 110 passing yards, okay? Okay. Well, I am a Dallas Cowboy fan, so I'm just hoping for the best. Download the app today and use code IDIOTS to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. That's $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup when you download the Prize Picks app. Prize Picks, run your game. Let's get back to the show. Let's do some church announcements. What you got, Schultz? Next show is on the Life Tour, Minneapolis. And Milwaukee, um, we've added a bunch of other shows. These are last shows and uh, special announcements coming soon. I think that's maybe even next week there'll be an announcement about when we're going to film the special, where we're going to film the special. So I'm very excited to share that with you guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've added shows in Denver, uh, San Jose, Reno, a uh, bunch more cities, dangerousshows.com. Those are the last shows of the Life Tour. This is very... Uh, yeah, very, very, very awesome experience for me. And I'd love for you guys to go check it before we film it. And then once we film it, it's over. Never to be done again. So you're going to win an Emmy. Oh, dude. Thank you, man. You're That'd going cool. to win an Emmy for the life tour. Thank you, brother. If you don't win an Emmy, something wrong. Wow. If Thanks. You, I'm telling you, you're going to win an Emmy, bro. I appreciate that, man. You're going to fucking win an Emmy for that show. Um, church announcements. Uh, my fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo is happening Saturday, October 12th at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square, New York City from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, it is a day of uh, mental health and healing education in honor of World Mental Health Day. The event is free and open to all ages to register to attend. Uh, or just for more details, go to mentalwealthexpo.com. You don't have to register to attend. You can just show up. You know, we've been doing it every year for the last four years. I bring together some of the best therapists, best mental health professionals in the business. Dr. Alfie Breland Noble is going to be there. Dr. Rita Walker is going to be there. Dr. Jay Barnett. Uh, Dr. Cheyenne Bryant is going to be there. Um, Dr. Topeka Sam is going to be there. Dr. Judith Joseph. Just a lot of amazing people, man. So we'll see you Saturday, October 12th. Tyrese is going to be there. Tyrese is going to be there in conversation with Jason Wilson. Just having a conversation about uh, men and us being vulnerable. So Saturday, October 12th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Marriott Marquis, Times Square, New York City. Free event. My fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo open, you know, to all ages. So I'll see you there. Also, I want to salute to all the smoke. Um, their coffee table book comes out October 8th on my book in print, Black Privilege Publishing with Simon & Schuster. Also salute to all the smoke for their conversation they just had with the Vice President Kamala Harris. Make sure you go check that out on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast net. Work and I want to salute to everybody who's been getting uh, purchasing uh, my new my new graphic novel that's coming out hey. uh, called Ill Illuminati. Okay, Ill Illuminati. It'll be out. Um, it'll be out in February. We're gonna be in Comic Con in November. Uh, I actually just released the variant covers. You know, I did uh, the variant covers, which are based off um, some some really dope iconic hip hop albums. So, you know, I did uh, Red Man There, The Dark Side, Ice Cube, Death Certificate, uh, DMX, Flesh in My Flesh, Blood in My Blood. I did Dale I Sold, Three Feet High and Rising, and Old Dirty Bastard, Return to the 36th Chamber. So go to kickstarter.com, type in Ill, Ill, Illuminati, and uh, yeah, man, you get a copy of the graphic novel because I'm gonna be telling a lot of secrets in there. A lot of things that they don't want us to talk about in this business uh, will be in this comic book. It may or may not be based on a true story. Whoa. Perfect segue. Whoa. Into what we about to talk about. Sean Diddy Combs hit with a new wave of 120 new sexual assault allegations. Wow. Make that big, Taylor. Pause. I almost feel like you gotta, you gotta throw an allegation his way now because you don't want to be like the, the willing participant at the freak off. Damn. <laughs> like you know what I mean like if you're someone who went to freak offs a lot and everybody knows you went they're looking at you like you're crazy so you gotta accuse them so that you're not one of the people who is abusing you're one of the victims back in the day people didn't want to miss a Diddy party 
I'm, there was a lot of people at that white part party. This is another Diddy party. Year. This is another Diddy party people don't want to miss. Ooh. <laughs> they they, they want to be there. Mm. Uh, in fresh lawsuits against Diddy, a Texas attorney represents over 100 accusers. Texas attorney Tony Busby said he represents 120 women with 20 year old charges against the entertainment tycoon during Tuesday's news conference. I thought it was 60 women, 60 men. It's, that says 120 women. Hmm, interesting. We will expose the enablers who enabled this conduct behind closed doors. We will pursue this matter, no matter who the evidence implicates, Busby said during the news conference. Busby said the charges would include violent sexual assault or facilitated sex with a controlled substance, uh, dissemination of video recordings and sexual abuse of minors. The lawyer stated more than 3,000 people have accused Combs and that will and that he will file litigation in multiple states within 30 days and will announce to other defendants later. Busby claims 62% of this new batch of accusers are African-American and come from more than 25 states, mostly New York, California, Georgia, and Florida. According to Busby, 25 of the accusers were children when the oh, crimes Jesus. occurred. Some in 1991, the lawyer said one accuser was nine years old when the incident occurred. Scroll up, Taylor, that's it? Yeah, well, so look, this... Um Article says that it's well, an equal number of men and women ranging from yeah, that's nine, what I saw. I saw yeah. sixty nine to thirty eight. So this is from Topic Pulse. So I don't know. Yeah, go to the what's the this this would uh, listen. I don't know, you know what's true and what's not true. Uh, you know, there's a lot. I don't think you got to put no sauce on the Diddy story. No, nah. uh, I don't think you got to put no seasoning on it. He's cooked either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we all saw a video of him. You know, brutally. Assault and cat. Yeah, he should have been locked up for that. Well, the statute of limitations was up on that, but my my, my uh, point by saying that is that you know, it, it's, it's it's hard to give him the benefit of the doubt when you see something like that, right? Um, but I also feel like I know when a lawyer is lawyering. My whole thing about this situation is they created a hotline number for people to call if you've been sexually assaulted by Diddy. I don't understand why we would think people would operate in good faith in 2024 when you take a hotline number and make it public and you put it on social media. You don't think that it's a bunch of people that's going to be calling in? There's got to be a way to, to verify. But that's what I want to know. How? That's yeah. what I'm getting at. How do you verify what's a credible claim and what's just somebody from academic chat room playing? <laughs> right? It's somebody from academic chat playing. I wonder like, if, I saw yeah. Act call the number. No, he didn't. And, yes, and oh, Act was like, should funny. I leave a message? That's should I leave a funny. message? So when I see that, that automatically makes me, lets me know. You think other people aren't doing no, that? No, of course they are. So there's either a way to do it, or there's, a way, there's either a way to verify it, or they're just trying to put so much public pressure on Diddy and his team that he accepts whatever plea that they offer. Now, let's talk about that. There's a, there's a clip I want to play. Yeah, play that, Taylor. There you go. Is this what he's talking about, the corporation going after the corporation? Yeah, yeah play this. Andrew hit it on the head just hoping, now. Perhaps uh, believing that I may start naming names. Well, that day will come, but it won't be today. The day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names. Um... It's a long list already. And of course, I already know who some of these individuals are, but because of the nature of this case, we're gonna make damn sure, damn sure that we're right before we do that. Uh, but the names that we're gonna name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is, those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. And I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. They know who they are. I call them the facilitators of foul play willing participants in vile conduct. As we identify them, each will be part of this case as defendants. These defendants will not only include individuals, but would also include corporate entities who ultimately profited off of this culture and behavior. I'm looking at banks, pharmaceutical companies, hotels. We know that many of these individuals were paid cash. We know that, that 
many of these individuals involved, whether they were the ones being How assaulted and tale? abused, or they're well, seeing other oh, yeah, people being like assaulted I, listen, and abused. And I got a take, by the way, that I... Uh, go, go, go. NB asked me a question this morning on the radio. He goes, why, why do they do press conferences about this? This is what's happening right now. The lawyer, he comes out, he holds a big press conference. He says, it's 120 people making these accusations. Notice what he says. He says, we're going after the corporations, the pharmaceutical companies. You know, I don't know what the pharmaceutical companies got to do with it, but when you talk about these corporations, right, you're talking about the entities that somebody like Diddy used to work for, or who all of these different, you know, people that he said he's going to name work for. The reason they'd go out there and do this press conference is because they're hoping that somebody tries to get ahead of it and just settles. So they don't come out and shoot their load and say, you're on this tape, that, that person's on this tape, or, you know, this company, we're going to sue them, this and that. They contact them behind the scenes and tell them, this is what we're about to do. We're about to do a, a whole press conference. Well, first they give you they give you a choice. They 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 contact you behind the scenes and see if you want to settle that way. The, if you don't want to settle that way, they then do they the do cuts. this. Yeah. And he still didn't put nobody on blast yet. Mm -hmm. He just said that there's corporations and companies, whatever, whatever. He puts all of these crazy accusations out there, and he <laughs> hopes that those people just straight up settle. Yeah. Because ain't no money with Diddy no more. Let's be clear on that. Kathy got her payment, rightfully so. These people that are accusing Diddy, these 120 people, Diddy's about to spend all of whatever money he got left on legal fighting fees. criminal cases yeah. and civil cases. It's all going to legal fees. There's not going to be any money for any victims, yeah. right? Alleged or otherwise. You know how much, if you get hit with 120 cases, you know how much money that is? You're talking about like 12 to $24 million dollars. Because you're fighting individual cases. Like, oh, in legal fees, you're saying. You yeah. got if, if you're Diddy, yeah. you got to answer every single one of these. A lawyer has to answer every single yeah. one of these. Yeah. These cases are like a hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're gonna. He's going. There's no more money suing Diddy. That is. There's no more of that. That's gone. I'm curious. They're not grouping it together like a class action. No. I thought they were, but I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. What's your take? I heard an interesting thing. Okay. Um. So Diddy sues Diageo, who is the owner of Ciroc, for uh, racism or something like that. Uh -huh. He's making the $50, $60 million a year, but he doesn't actually own the bottle. So he wants to, I guess, own it or something like that. He's just getting paid per bottle. But he has like an insane deal. He's getting paid per case, right? Well, no, that was with Ciroc. Yeah, Ciroc is owned by Diageo. Yeah, it was, yeah, my yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. So Diageo apparently, allegedly... I think, uh, looks like I think they might have lost the lawsuit and Diddy might have won it. They did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Diageo allegedly sends out private investigators to start snooping around and seeing some fucked up shit that Diddy might do because there is one way that you could nullify their contract and that is if he breaks a morality clause because a lot of times contracts have morality clauses. Mm -hmm. So if you are charged with a federal crime, that might be enough to break your contract, right? Because for example, if you're the ambassador of a brand, but then you're charged with a, fe with a felony, you can't stay on as the ambassador for the brand. So that would nullify it. So maybe in an effort to save the billion dollar payout or whatever it was, they tell these you know, private investigators dig up as much shit as possible. They've got connections to feds. I mean, this is the liquor lobby at the end of the day, right? This is a very powerful lobby. They start giving them this information and then the feds go after it. They have a real case. And then the felony gets, he gets charged with the felony or he may get charged with the felony. I don't know if it's already happened. Um, yeah, he got indicted. He got indicted. Yeah. Is that a charge though? Or is a... Is, uh, yeah. That is a charge. Great. So then it might nullify yeah. the contract. He hasn't, I, I been, he hasn't say, been convicted. No, no, but just the just yeah, the yeah, indictment. Yeah. But uh, that's I, an interesting take. What do you think about? I heard that, but he already got from what I was from what I read back in the day. He already got paid from DeAndre. He got paid from DeAndre like since early this year. So I, mean, I think the, he settled already. Yeah, he settled. He settled. Settled might not be paid. That's no, what I'm I think trying he got to say. Paid. And they and they've been parted ways. So like this happened months, 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 months ago. I mean, I, I've been hearing that theory about, you know, the corporations. Listen, I could be totally wrong. I don't think that there's too many people that are important enough for a corporation to want to do all this to. 
Yeah. There's only one person, and I, I really mean this when I say this, and I know this is great conspiracy theory. There's only one person I believe in Hollywood who people conspired to actually take down. Who? I'm talking about a mass cons- conspiracy. Anytime they take you down, it's, a, it's people conspiring. Yeah. Cause it's usually because you did some shit. Yeah. But I think that there's one person who they really took down because he had too much power, and I believe that person was Michael Jackson. Wow. I truly believe that. And the reason I believe that is because you can look into the story. And, you know, we had Deion Cole on Breakfast Club today. Deion Cole told us a story about how he got high with Paul McCartney, and Paul McCartney told him, Paul McCartney and Michael used to be real cool. Paul was telling Michael, like, yo, you got to get your business together. You got to get your business right. Uh, he told him about the publishing game. He bought the Beatles publishing. And Michael ended up getting so big that he bought the Beatles publishing. The Beatles publishing was worth so much that literally Sony gave Michael Jackson half of their publishing company just to own the Beatles catalog. So whatever you used to see, so look it up. Whenever you used to see Sony ATV, that was Sony and ATV was Michael Jackson's publishing company, right? Imagine how powerful a black man is when he owns half of the, well, our majority of the music industry's publishing. And in some cases was even giving publishing back to some of the artists. He gave Little Richard his publishing back. I don't know how many people he did that to, but he gave Little Richard his publishing back. Look, in 2016, and this one, this one 2016, Sony paid $750 million to acquire Michael Jackson's, what is that, 50% stake in Sony ATV Music Publishing, a joint venture that Jackson and Sony formed in 1995. This made Sony the sole owner of the world's largest music publishing company. I believe... This is all conspiracy theory. This is brilliant idiots, by the way. We're just talking. This podcast. I believe that Michael Jackson had too much power in the music industry, had too much control over the most valuable asset in music, which is people's publishing. publishing, And I believe they had to take him out because of him. Smear his name, you know, eventually get him up out of here. In 2016... (laughs) <laughs> they got it back for way cheaper than they probably would have paid if he was still alive. He's the one person. Motherfucker talking about Bill Cosby trying to buy NBC and, you know, nah. He's the one person I believe in entertainment. Entertainment, mind you, I said the entertainment industry. Conspiracies happen all the time in other industries that actually really matter. Yeah. But the entertainment industry, he's the one person I believe actually, uh, they, they ruined his, they killed his reputation and ultimately killed him. Did they? they buy this after he died or before? I don't remember. Yeah. This after. When he did- I did that. Michael died in 2009. Taylor oh, trying man. to rile shit up here. So they bought- the accused shit. We never know who they is, by the yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody ever knows who they is. I know is. who Taylor thinks they is. <laughs> who you think they is, Taylor? I'm not saying. Dove? <laughs> that's who Taylor thinks we never they know is. who they is we never know who they is but that's, that he's the one Michael Jackson is the one person in entertainment I believe they actually tried to take out wow <laughs> or took out no let me say try they took, or took out. out all that other stuff that did you know the, the liquor companies that, eh, I'm not saying it's not possible but why wait so you think they hired the doctor to give him an overdose. Well, I think I think that that distress of it all. I think, man, think about yo. Think what they did to Michael. No, no, no but he was. They an accused addict. Michael of being a pedophile, right? Mm-hmm. And he, I think he's saying they, he's saying before he's saying the accusations of pedophilia and yes. like the yeah, destruction yeah, yeah. of his character, distress problems, making him Michael radioactive. Yes. and then later the doctor is dealing with the repercussions of that humiliation. Got gotcha. you. That's all I'm saying. Like Michael, they. This is what somebody needs to do a documentary on how powerful Michael Jackson was and how much people wanted that Beatles catalog. Yeah, why has nobody done that? It's kind of interesting. I, I, I've been trying to do it. But what happened? I can't get nobody that because I'm not going to do the research. <laughs> I can't get nobody. I, I just come up with the idea. You know what I mean? I so if you don't know the research, it might not even be true. No, I know the basics. I know this. Like, yeah. I know this happened. Google Michael Jackson gets half a Sony ATV, Taylor. I know this is a act. This actually happened. I know that the Beatles catalog was worth so much that Sony ATV decided to do a joint venture with Michael Jackson. I know at one point Michael Jackson owned people's publishing like Eminem how did and he, Beyonce. How did he originally get 
Well, they did a joint venture, so they're like he bought so, the Beatles catalog. Well, no, well, Sony and Michael Jackson Boy. created a joint venture. Yes, okay, and then that joint venture, I think, bought the Beatles catalog. No, 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 then, no, no, no. Michael bought it before. My, I, from right here, it makes it sound, sound like Sony oh, look, ATV it, Publishing. No, he he created his own publishing company, right? In '85, yeah, and he purchased. He, well, he per yeah, he purchased ATV Music Publishing, which owned the Beatles catalog. So he purchased that for $41.5 million, oh. which gave him control of most of the Beatles songs. And then later on, 10 years, or no, not 10 years, yeah, 10 years later, Sony partnered with him because they wanted to own that catalog. Ah, uh, so they bought 50% of the catalog in 95. Yeah, it's the same shit. Yeah, in 85. Well, not, uh, a joint well, yeah, venture. Yeah, Michael bought ATV Music Publishing in 85. 85. There you 95, go. Sony buys half of it. There you go. And then 2016, they buy the other half. There you go. Got it. How go. much wow. did they buy the half for? $750 million. No, the, fir the first half. Mm. It doesn't say. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. All I'm saying is this, he's the only person I feel like in entertainment. I mean, that'd be an amazing documentary Man. show. Like, even if it's not true. Uh, actually, don't like well, let the truth stop you from making. Well, even, but even <laughs> even just from a creative perspective, think about Michael Jackson yeah. being a talent who started as a child star, yeah. right, with his brothers, the Jackson yeah. Five, grew to be such a successful artist, made so much money, gets game from another artist that's super successful, icon, living Paul McCartney, and buys the Beatles catalog from him, and Sony wants it so much that they do a joint venture with Michael Jackson. And now Michael owns half of the entertainment world's publishing. Mm. Like, that's huge. Mm. Like there was a time Michael owned like, I think it was Eminem. Name Google that Taylor. Who who's publishing did Michael Jackson own, other than the Beatles? Damn. This shit was it. This shit Damn. was bigger than Nino Brown. Why didn't say. Why didn't Paul McCartney buy his own publishing? He had the bread. I don't oh. think people realize how big Michael Jackson was, yo. No, also, forty one million was. back in the day is like. Oh, they didn't have they didn't have that. I don't think people realize how big Michael Jackson was. No, no, no. Yo. I know Mike had the money. I'm surprised Paul McCartney did, because didn't they write all their music, play all their music? I would imagine they were making quite a bit from. It, look, Michael Jackson famously owned the publishing rights to a significant portion of the music catalog for Sony ATV Music Publishing, which included many iconic songs from a variety of artists, most notably the Beatles. Look, look at this. Other artists, in addition to the Beatles catalog, Sony ATV included songs from a wide range of artists such as Bob Dylan, Elvis Presley, Eminem, Taylor Swift, Lady Gaga. Damn. <laughs> like, wow. Like, and, this is, and he started as a talent. That's a, that's a huge, that's, it's just huge. I, just, I, just, I think he's the only person that somebody wanted to smear enough to get their hands on that. That makes sense. And what is the discount that they got on the publishing because he was smeared? Like, why would it make the publishing worth any less? I don't know if it was a discount or, like, because like he said, Michael bought it for $41.5 million, but that was 85. So when they bought it, it was 2016. So clearly all the money was, it was worth enough for them to spend $750 million on it. I guess what I'm saying, what discount would they get because they smeared Mike? I don't know. Maybe shit. Did he need money for legal fees? Did he need money because he wasn't touring? Like, why does he need money? Well, if you watch, oh, that is a good point. If you watch the, uh, when I went to go see the, um, the play on uh Michael on Jackson. Broadway yeah, the, the MJ the musical yeah. there was a part where he was he was having financial trouble yeah he was having financial trouble i remember that you know yeah so i don't know maybe that and maybe that was his asset that he didn't want to give up and maybe somebody tried to come to him and make him give it up and he didn't want to give it up so you want you don't want to give it up now gonna... you like little boy but now you're like, little boy, but... <laughs> this, they, they, it, hey, man. Listen, we act like the media can't demonize a person in 2.2 seconds. They oh, do. No. If they yeah, didn't want him to own it, why would they give it to him in the first place? They didn't give it he to him. They didn't give it to him. He, he had it already. It. But what? He had the bread. He had to be... I have... I own it. I know, but they can't just make it high. Like, can they just like, no? <laughs> no, no. He didn't buy it from Sony. He bought it from... He bought another oh, company first. Yeah. okay. Yeah. It's just like, I don't, I, 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 the, the, the media can demonize you in two seconds if they want to, yo. Mm. I, I, we watched Brett Favre last week. Brett Favre was at a congressional hearing yeah. <laughs> testifying for money that he, that he stole, right, from, from welfare recipients, right? And all he did was say, I'm suffering from Parkinson's disease. And everybody, it just changed the whole narrative. I didn't even realize he was there because of the wealth, because, because taking the money from the wealth. Me neither. I thought he was talking about Me Parkinson's. too. Yeah. I thought he was on Congress 
talking about yeah. the impact of Parkinson's disease. Yeah. I had no idea. My point is, they would only allow somebody they like to do that. If they wanted to demonize, let Diddy go up there and say he got motherfucking the shakes or some shit. Like, you think they gonna give a fuck? Like, just, they go like, Your Honor, he's dancing. He's not taking it serious. Take, that, take, take this that. money. Take take this money. This Ain't no, no way, way you could take this from me. From me. Now let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, they not gonna give a flying fuck what yeah. Diddy got when Diddy go to court. Mm. Diddy can name every disease in the book. They won't give a fuck. Okay, Brett Favre can go up there and say he got Parkinson's, and it's and, and it's all all is forgiven. My point is, they can demonize who they want in the media. They choose not to. They cho they chose to demonize Michael Jackson. All right, that's my personal opinion. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Damn, huh? man, how did he not you, have enough protection? How did, are uh, more people like outraged about the Brett Favre thing? Because are, are people outraged about it? Yeah. Like, I feel like no one cares, but he was stealing a lot of money. It wasn't just for the volleyball courts. Pull it up, Taylor. He How much like, did Brett Favre steal? He was stealing money from... It was like five. No, it was more like, like 10, right? No, nah, I heard he was like... He had something where he was stealing money to fund making a drug for yes. Parkinson. He used a couple million stole. dollars to make an investment <laughs> and said that, at the, said that at the trial hearing like it was like... Yeah, man, I even took a loss, man. I took some of them money Shit. and invested in this company to help people. Like, former NFL quarterback Brett Favre was accused of misusing millions of dollars in federal welfare, for, welfare funds in Mississippi and is currently being sued by the state to recover the money. Favre received $1.1 million in welfare funds. Hit show more. $1.1 million in welfare funds for speaking engagements he never gave. He repaid the money, but the state is demanding he pay back interest totaling $729,790. Volleyball arena. Favre is accused of encouraging the use of welfare funds to build a volleyball arena at his alma mater, the University of Southern Mississippi. Favre donated his own money and helped make funds, help raise funds for this facility. And then the con con concussion treatment drug. Favre is accused of supporting a pharmaceutical company that pocketed $2.15 in state funds for a concussion treatment drug. Mm. He's, he's one of more than 36 defendants in the lawsuit filed by the Mississippi Department of Human Services. Although prosecutors have charged several public officials and nonprofit leaders in the scandal, Favre has not faced any allegations How does of he have access to this money? Was he, he a politician? No, his homies. His homies is politicians. They, they got text messages with... I, I, I don't know if it's phone calls or text messages with Brett Favre basically saying, like... um. Pull up the Brett Favre text, Taylor. The Brett Favre, what was the text? He's basically said, not like... Not all the text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not all the text. Yeah, he has some wild... He's a wild boy. You're going to see that guy from hedonism. Yes, he questioned... <laughs> he questioned the legality of welfare funds. Go back to the headline, Taylor. He questioned the legality of welfare funds he received. Like, he knew... Mm -hmm. he, was, he was asking, basically, could it be traced back to them? Go back. Go back up. Uh, man, what, it's what's this? Is, is, is the, the money, money I was paid 100% legal for radio commercials, Favre wrote? Uh, In a text message, the Mississippi Community Education Center nonprofit operator, Nancy Neal. So he's asking to make sure it is. No, it is other text. I saw the other text. The other text was basically him saying... Are you sure it can't be traced back to us or some shit like that? Uh, so he, he, he's, he's aware. He's... 100%. Like, you, if you're taking money that's supposed to go to welfare, welfare. yeah. To make volleyball courts, it's crazy. Yeah. And what a and dumb he move. got money. Well, one, he's got money, too. Like, take money that was supposed to go towards some rich shit. Yeah. Like, if you steal from the rich, nobody's really upset. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you steal from the poor, you're an asshole. Yeah. Or the government. Oh, that's what it was, too. He claimed, he said he claimed he never, he said the quarterback said he had not known the funds he received came from welfare money and that he would never, scroll up, Taylor, and that he would never knowingly do anything to take away from those that need it most. He has similarly denied knowing that Prevacus or volleyball money came from TANF funds. But the screenshots of Favre in news text messages that White publishing is filing do not appear to include news reply to Favre's questions about whether the 1.1 payment was legal. But invisible text in the filing show news response that the auditor's office apparently attempted to redact it. Come on, man. Well, I don't know, man. That's some scummy shit. It's man. scummy. It's just some scummy shit. Scummy as fuck. And you can't you can't get around it. Like you steal from poor people that need it. Yeah. It's fucked up. You're gonna get yeah, you gonna would he get the criticism like you deserve. Like that. Did Brett Favre really have a legacy, bro? Yeah. Yeah, he was loved. He was yeah, he was yeah, he was the man. He was a man. It, yeah, it is, but it is fucked up. Green in Green Bay, he was king. Hell yeah, he he, he, he got a chip. 
I know. I never loved. I never loved Brett Favre. Oh, like, he was beloved. I love Brady. Yeah, but you weren't a Green Bay fan. I'm not a Brady. I'm not a Patriots fan. But you, there's certain people you respect. I respect Steve Young. Steve Young was a dog. I'm not saying Brett Favre was a dog. I just didn't. I don't know. I just don't put Brett up there like that. He played a long time. Right, and that was the thing, right? To see this old man still out there for twenty years throwing nah, the football. It was gunslinger. He was a gunslinger. He Tom would let Brady rip. was Tom Brady was forty plus, still winning them though. Winning no, rings. I mean you're not. You can't compare him, but he was just a fun guy to watch. He was gonna go for it. He was gonna go for it every single time. It was funner to me, is what I'm saying. Who was Steve Young? Was fun. People forget how good Steve Young no, was. No, Steve bro. was nice. Steve he Young could run. was fun to watch. Joe Montana was fun to watch. Michael Vick was fun no, to watch. Even though nobody, he never won a ring, nobody Michael Vick was than, fun to watch. Yeah, man. nobody better than Mike. I didn't. I, Brett Favre was just okay to me. I'm like, you know, he had more. He had more endorsements than anything. Yeah, was white people's Michael Vick. Yeah, that's yeah. Good really? old country boy, yeah. tough guy, could throw the ball hard. That was the lure around him. Like, yeah. oh, his arm is crazy. He's got a cannon. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like a guy at a freak off. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing the ball around. Oh, I'm crazy. Oh, got a yeah. turning. Yeah. Um, JD Vance. Oh, oh yeah. no. Let's do some rest in pieces, first of all. Okay. John Amos died at 84. Rest in peace. Yeah. Oh, he was this in is a coma? August 21st. He was in a coma? No, he was no. deceased since so, August 21st. So why are you just RIB now? I don't know Wait. why they just announced it now. Yeah, why are you just saying it now? I just because found out like everybody else. He was dead, deceased since August 21st. Well, well, listen, rest in peace, John. Also, Dikembe Mutombo. Oh, man. That, That's I'm not going to lie. The John Amos one hurt because it's like, damn, when he lived along, like 84 is a pretty good life. I, I, I had, feel like Dikembe Mutombo, 58 is too young, bro. I had no clue he had brain cancer. Me neither. Fit, like Dikembe Mutombo died at 58 from brain cancer, man. Like Mutombo yeah. was the god. Oh, he's like, great. Why did we love Dikembe Mutombo so much growing up? He, I don't know. He was funny. He was funny. Was it the humor? He had mm -hmm. jokes. And the Nuggets jerseys were fire. Nuggets jerseys were fire. He also, this shit the, right this here. This right here, like, yes, man. His voice, he had this booming voice. Mm. It was cartoonish almost. Yeah, it was great. He was one of those guys. He's one of those guys. He's a legend. That became a superstar off defense. Yeah. And you know what else? I thought about this the other day. The Georgetown allure. There was something about Georgetown back in the day. If you played for the Hoyas, especially if you were a center, people fucked with you. I didn't know he went to Georgetown. I think you're thinking of Patrick Ewan. No, I know Ewan, Ewan Morning. Matumbo didn't go to Georgetown? I don't know, maybe. Google that. I thought, yeah, Matumbo went to Georgetown. Am I tripping? Yeah. Patrick Ewan, Alonzo Morning. Allen Iverson. They can't remember talking about Allen Iverson. Like, we love Joe. Why, what happened? Why people don't go to Georgetown no more? John Thompson. He passed away, right? No, he quit. No, no he, he quit. Away. He did. But he did pass away, though, right? Uh, I think he might have passed. John away. Thompson. I'm not sure. No, they had a they had a squad. Well, Georgetown was this shit. Why y'all don't go to Georgetown no more? The bro? jerseys Georgetown, were fire. I might, I might go. I might go get some old Georgetown jerseys for the culture. Rest nah. in peace to Kimbe Matumbo, though, man. Yeah, rest in peace, man. What else we got, Taylor Gang? We got any more ads? Yeah. Let's do another ad, and then let's do an asking some asking idiots. Yeah. Let's um. Yo, sorry, we might cut this, but who's Maggie Smith? That's the I don't know. That's why I didn't do it. I didn't know it was. From Sister Act. <laughs> Sister Act. Yeah. Uh, the white we only know two girls from Sister Act. Yeah. You know. Let me go piss. Yeah. She was like, I Lauren Hill Whoopi's... or Whoopi Goldberg. I say that... Harry Potter. Yeah, she was on Harry Potter. Who watches that shit? Yeah, don't, 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 don't disrespect. Yeah, you, exactly. Don't disrespect. <laughs> uh, let's pay some bills. As a parent, I know firsthand that finding a snack everyone enjoys is no easy task. That's Facts. why I love Chomps Meat Snacks. They have <laughs> flavors my kids love and are made of real ingredients that I can feel good giving them. They easily fit into any bag, so I always have them on hand in case hunger strikes, okay? From my wife to my kids, all right? There's a flavor for everyone. Answer this question. How healthy snacks everyone loves is so important as a parent. Look, listen, man, healthy snacks are very important because Nowadays, man, you are what you eat. And you've always been all what you eat. But, you know, you don't want your kids to be obese. You don't, you don't want your kids to have to deal with no unnecessary diseases. So you try to make us, your kids, eat as healthy as possible, especially if you're a, 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 an adult who's on their own health kick. So if you're looking for a healthy snack that doesn't compromise on taste, say hello to Chomps. Chomps meat snacks have up to 12 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and are made with only real ingredients, okay? Finally, a snack that fills you up, that's made of ingredients you can feel good about. Chomps comes in 10 delicious flavors. So there's something for everyone. They're made with only the highest quality protein like grass-fed and finished beef and antibiotic-free turkey. The only tough choice is what flavor to try first. 
Right now, Chomps is offering 10% off your first order when you sign up to their email list by going to chomps.com slash idiots. Go to chomps.com slash idiots to see all the delicious flavors and get 10% off your first order when you sign up to their email list. That's C-H-O-M-P-S dot com slash idiots. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. Let's get back to the show. Uh, Can I ask you a question? Yes, yes, sir. You heard about this new uh, tank fight? <laughs> Trevante Davis. Okay. The person that he's going to fight. Okay. Who's he fighting? I don't know the guy's name, but that is the problem. I know it sounds like I'm trying to catch you. Nah, you at first, the way you did it at first, like, <laughs> everybody's new tank fight? Yeah, 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 yeah. Take these nuts in your no. bow. No, 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 no. Somebody <laughs> in New Orleans gave me a good one to use you. I should have wrote it down, man. He was saying it to me while I was walking out. What'd he say? I can't even remember. I should have wrote it down. It was good, so I would have got you good. That mental health shit. You got to watch out for the, uh, <laughs> the mind goblins. <laughs> the mind goblins. What is the, who's he fighting? Pull it up. Who's tank fighting? What? I want to know. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You got to watch out for the mind goblins. <laughs> see? See, he would have got it. See? If I'd heard it the first time. <laughs> no. What? I'm not listening to you. What? Well, what is it? Nope. <laughs> Tell okay. me what nope. is it? Nope. You don't want to know? Nope. You're not curious? You know what that sound like? What Diddy would have been for Halloween this year if he, was out, if he wasn't in jail? <laughs> okay, a mind goblin. Yeah, tank, but tank, but no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The yard, what? 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 The what? mind goblins, bro. Is it ever an issue with you with your anxiety dealing with the mind goblins? I t- Taylor, what, pull up the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know, though. He wants to know what it is. Bad. He's so curious. <laughs> I already know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? Would you mind gobbling this dick? Hey! (laughs) There we go. There we go. Got that shit. You know what I mean? (laughs) <laughs> got that. You got that one. You fucking we got some that immature one. For you. Wale! 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 <laughs> I called y'all immature professionals on my speech. Uh, we oh. are that. <laughs> immature professionals? What is that? But you are. That's, I am a always professional. That's, that's, that's who works at a Diddy Free Calls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, show. You uh, gotta use that for your next thing. Oh, <laughs> the immature professionals. You know, they immature professionals. All right, um, so <laughs> let's do some math. Where were we? Where were we? No, no, you were about to say something. Uh, oh, JD Van. What was it? Javante Davis. Oh yeah, who's he fighting? So he's fighting some guy that I don't know. And like, no disrespect to the guy he's fighting. I just am not. I'm like a boxing fan. I'm not familiar with who he is. And I think that the question is. It's like, why isn't he just fighting one of the big fights? I feel like you. I feel like you really trying to rope a dope me, yo. Yo, I feel like you going all the way around. <laughs> just to try Can to you look at who who Javante Davis is fighting next? <laughs> they have not announced no new tank fight. <laughs> the only thing I've seen is the Asian guy Sugon. <laughs> yeah, <let's> see. <laughs> <I'm dying. laughs> no, no, right. no. Lam- What's his name? Lamont Roach Jr. Yeah. Lamont. I heard of Lamont. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard of Lamont Rose Jr. Have you heard of Lamont? I, I've heard of Lamont. You yeah, know you Lamont? Lamont? You know Lamont? They call him La for short. You know La? Yeah. <laughs> but you know Lamont, right? <laughs> You guys are crazy. You guys are stupid. You really are stupid. You know Lamont, you know Lamont right? No, but have you heard of them? Have you heard of the fighter? No. <laughs> it's a no, real fighter. No, I have heard of him, though. Oh, okay. What's his record? Uh, I've seen Lamont Rhodes Jr. fight. On I think like he ESPN might be from Washington, D.C., and I think that uh, obviously Tank's from Baltimore, so maybe there's like a little rivalry with that. But I don't know who, I mean. Tank is just so huge. He's so prolific. You want to see him fight the biggest guys. Maybe the guys are avoiding you? him. Or do you I just do, want to see him knock somebody the fuck out? All right, so maybe you're on to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would love to see him fight. You know, Lomachenko. Lomachenko. I'd love to see him fight uh, uh, Tef, uh, Tia, well, Tiafimo, Tiafimo Lopez, Lopez. Um, Garcia. Gar- I would like. I actually would like to see Tank. He's twenty-seven, one and one. 
27. I've seen I mean, sorry, fight. 25 one another. I want to yeah. see Tank fight Shakur Stevenson. That's the fight. I think that's the fight they should be trying to make next. Mm. That's that's a good fight to me. Mm. Tank Davidson. I mean, Tank Davis uh, versus uh, Shakur Stevenson. That's a good fight. Everything else is just like, eh, okay. He's not into it. Um, JD Vance. Uh, I, I, I predicted that I thought he would probably get the best of Tim Walls. And he washed him or what? Um, it, was, it wasn't that it was a wash. He was just better. He was a little slicker, a little bit more smoother. I mean, Tim Walls was in their name. He was nailing policy and all that. But here's the thing that people don't realize. That is for a certain demographic. There's a certain demographic that's watching for policy. There's a certain demographic that's just watching. For personality. They don't know what's going on. Yeah. And so they're just going to look at who seems like they know what they're talking about and who seems more confident in what they're talking about. And that was J.D. Vance. But I also think a lot of this has to do with optics. When you're 39 years old or 40 or whatever J.D. Vance is, he looks extremely younger than, you know, Tim Walls. Tim Walls is great at pep rallies, right? Yeah. He's an old coach. You go out there, you rile people up. You're like, yeah, granddad, yeah. But now when you know you're going back and forth with your 40-year-old grandson, yeah. You know? He's scary. Why is eyes Yeah, he looks like he's guy? skydiving. He wears eye love. <laughs> don't he look like he's in an airplane that don't have like the, the, the glass for the cockpit? Wow. What are you watching? Just kidding. Oh. Sorry. It's too many audio. <laughs> You talk about Waltz or Vance? Waltz. And, J- oh. and JD was good because he was so hospitable. Like he, that, like they looked like they were having a, a friendly debate. Like he would say, you know, I actually agree with Tim there. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was, it was. I think that was strategy. I think that JD course. knows that Tim is tries to be like the likable nice guy. Yeah. So he's like, all right, well, I'm gonna be likable and nice, and then what are you gonna do? Are mm-hmm. you gonna come over the top being likable and nice? I think that was smart. Yeah, it was smart on his behalf. Yeah. Like Waltz should have came at him he should have attacked him like how do you not say any of the bullshit that he's said in the past he ain't bring it up once you know why what because tim walls is the person who coined the phrase weird i think that they've been running those those uh those ads about you know kamala wanting taxpayer the vice president wanting taxpayers dollars to pay for transgender surgery in prison as soon as tim walls would have called jd vance weird JD would have just started running all of that shit down. He'd have started calling him Tampon Timmy, and he would have started talking about, you know, hey, you wanted tampons in the male bathroom, and the vice president wanted to wants to spend taxpayer dollars on sex, sex changes. Like he would have put Tim in a weird corner with that. And this is national television. Mm. Right. There's people that know about these things, but they don't know about these things. Oh, so JG is basically waiting for Tim to take a shot. You call me weird. Now I'm about it's to bong, 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 bong. But if you don't, then we're going to be civil. And I'm That's just going right. to beat you with oh, intellect. Okay. Yes. So you thought he won? Um, yeah, I definitely think JD Man's won. I mean, it depends. like I said, here's the thing. If you're listening for policy, Tim Walls won. If you're looking for style, J.D. Vance won, right? And most people are just looking at it optic-wise and they're looking for for style. And I think, yo, as much as people think they feel comfortable with old white males, I don't think we want to see that as our elected officials anymore. I think J.D. Vance looking younger really does play play into that, especially if we spent a whole four years talking about how old Biden is. And then yeah. now people talk about how old Trump is. And when you put another old white man on TV, regardless of how likable people may say he what's, is. What's the shit that he JD said? J.D. Vance looks slicker. He, 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 uh, he claimed he was at Tiananmen Square or something like that. Did you see that? Mm. So this yeah. so he's is he just lying about what he does? You no, know, like, he just... He got the time frame wrong when what he happens, was there. Man, he's old. Well, Tiananmen Square is a specific moment. Too. That's what I'm saying. So I think he was there either a couple months before or after or something like that. So it oh. makes it seem like he was there while, what was it, like it was a conflict and shit, right? That's where I think the Tiananmen Square is where they drove over the Chinese dude with the tank. Mm. Well, I know he basically just got the time frame. So he was in the area, but just like months after. And he tries to make it seem like, oh, you know, I was. So that's like saying uh, I'm in New York during 9-11, but you're not. you there you Jan- came January. in January. Exactly. Like if you said that, we'd yeah, be like, that's what he you're did. a fucking psychopath. That's what he did. But Damn. he's done that a few times, I never, right? I, I didn't hear that. I didn't nah. know what he said. I didn't but hear that's that. why his He was answer, like, I was in Afghanistan. That's why or his he answer was so fucked up because he was just like, he. They goes, called him out on a lie, and he was and he's just like, like, "My constituents know yeah, who I am." Yeah. Da, da, da. It's like, well, but why God, would you say that? That was his worst moment of the debate. Thank God, this is one of the times we're not voting for uh, vice president. Vice president, I voted for I voted for Vice President Kamala Harris when Biden put her on the ticket. Hmm. You know, and I know that there's a lot of people that when President Obama was president, Biden made them feel comfortable in 08. 
Biden made a lot of people, and and especially those uh, you know electoral voters, he made a lot of them feel comfortable enough to vote for President mm -hmm. Obama. I don't y'all. I don't even remember who Hillary's running mate was. Oh yeah, who was it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, the guy from uh, West Virginia, wasn't it? He's like a. Son. Oh yeah, sucking on. <laughs> Come on, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, like the delivery. <laughs> yo, he didn't even disguise it. I know. He didn't even disguise it. Like, come on. He literally said, oh, yeah, blowjob joke. <laughs> That's what he said. Sucking on. <laughs> he didn't even go suit on. He didn't go my balls in. He didn't do anything. He just said sucking on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, like, said senator sucking on or something like that like just it was the, tim you know, disguise it a little bit <laughs> it was tim Kane. who senator tim Kane. Oh, uh, yeah. i don't, I don't even know. remember I, don't know fuck he I didn't know who he was then i don't know where the fuck he at now god bless senator tim Kane. let's do some asking idiots taylor oh wait before Here, I would, I would, they need to do fact checking though i prefer the debate with biden you wouldn't have a career if it was fact checking out. Oh. Imagine if they had the fact check podcast for the last. No, decade. I'm talking about. <laughs> I got time for that. Yeah. Shit. Imagine if, imagine if the only way to have a podcast yeah. was to just be fact based. Nah, fuck that, Come Al. On. Nah, bro. I mean, Al, stop it. idiot logic all day, every day. Let's go. Yeah. yeah, this is the debate for the president. Feelings don't care about your facts. They Al. don't. The because because guess what? Yesterday, JD Vance passed the vibe check. He did it's all feelings. Lied a bunch, but he passed the vibe check. It was all feelings. Tim Walls didn't pass the vibe check, but he had more facts. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I didn't yeah. even, to be honest with you, I didn't even look at that. What I said just now, I don't even know if it was true. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we used to be a fucking country, Alex. <laughs> we all that matters. Okay? We used to be a fucking country. Oh, that's the time. All right? <laughs> it's fucked up that we used to be a country. We used to be a goddamn country. <laughs> so these fucking white ladies like terror. Taylor came Terror. in here. Terror? Terror, yeah, you white lady terrorist. You came in here fucking it up for everybody. Like, what crap. is this shit? New York City is taking... New York, they giving the, the rats birth control? <laughs> yeah. That's, yep. What you eats will. rats? What can they put in the city what? that can eat they, rats? I saw a bird eating you a rat. You know. And stop it. Well, you're, <laughs> Yo, you're, stop. you're all trying to get me fucked up. That's what it really is. You over here trying to get me fucked up. By the way, it might come to that. If there's some apocalyptic shit that happens... Oh, New York, we're good. Y'all might as well... That's going to yeah. be the, that's gonna be the <laughs> we're delicacy. Good. We're not running out of food. By the way, that's a we good... We got plenty of food. Why wasn't Will Smith eating rats in I Am Legend? Wasn't he in New York? Yeah. Who says he wasn't? He they was, should have showed that. But he was still going to the grocery store and getting food. I thought he was hunting deer. He was hunting oh, yeah, deer. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, too. Oh, he wasn't in New York, then. He was in no, New York. Yes, he was. So why the fuck wasn't he eating rats? He went through them all. He didn't... <laughs> he might have known, for real. They should have showed that. Like, that shit would have been better than the hunting deer shit. If they just showed him an I Am Legend, like, hunting rats, like, people would have understood that, like, oh, that is New York. Wait, Because the many... rats ain't going nowhere. Mm. If the apocalypse happened tomorrow, the rats gonna be here. Do you we... remember how many years he said, though? Or the movie said? Like, how many years passed? He was eating canned food, though. I don't remember that. Free Will Smith, man. Shout out to <laughs> Big Willie. <laughs> Chill, I saw some, Free Will I, Smith. Man, I saw... I was, oh, so I, I did Global <laughs> Citizens uh, Saturday. I was. It was cool. I did global. I never did it before. I did global citizen Saturday. I'm not gonna say who. You're not. Don't worry. I'm not gonna say. But man, somebody pulled me to the side and said, "Yo, man, I saw you and Schultz reaction to Will Smith song." <laughs> they said, "I laughed so much at that." Reaction. That clip was hilarious. <laughs> that, that shit was he hilarious. Said, he said, uh, 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 all I'm gonna say is he can't stop laughing even when he hears the song now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, like, oh, oh man. Let's do some masking idiots, man. Let's do it. But can we do all the questions as Will Smith? No, stop. Come on. That's that's good. Let's try it. Let's just try it. All right, Charlotte. Who do we got? Real Estate of Mind Seven says. Who is the most interesting person you've met and why? God. There's so many. For me, it would be I am the dick. I am the Gregory. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
am the Pharaoh. Leave well I alone. am the con. Okay, <laughs> I am the Pharaoh, but I identify as a con. <laughs> I don't, I've met a lot of interesting people. I, I mean, my line of work. You know, my yeah. line of work allows me to meet a lot of interesting I'm individuals. Gregory, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met a lot of. I didn't know how you were gonna pull that off. Yeah. <laughs> all my, all of, you know, do you know the, the reason I say that those people and I mentioned, you know, Minister Farrakhan and Dick Gregory because they were su they're such elders. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, like Minister, I think Dick Gregory was in his 80s. Minister Farrakhan was in his 90s. The amount of wisdom, the things that they've seen, like they've seen things that we read about in history books, things that we talk about. I think people like, I guess because I'm so interested in history, not even just, you know, hip history of society, but like history and hip hop. When I talk to somebody like uh, Angie Martinez, yeah, Sway, like they met Biggie yeah. and Pac. Like that's, they're mythical figures to me. So it's like, you know, my interesting list is very, 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 very long because I've had an opportunity to, to talk to a lot of, you know, different people. My, my some of my favorite people to talk to nowadays are like either very old people, very el the elders are like really rich people. I like having conversations with the billionaires. Mm. Because everybody always, you know, in our mind, the things that they say is you know you can't become a billionaire unless you do something evil. You can't become right. a billionaire without yeah. stepping on people, this and that. So when you actually have conversations with them and you know you pick their brain and you realize why they got to where they got to, it has nothing to do yeah. with mm. anything nefarious. It's just that, like most of us, they come up with a great idea, and they find a way to capitalize on it, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? So it's like, you know, it's, it's like they are the free, they are the market, <laughs> they, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Enterprise, right? <laughs> like, you know, that's the world we live in, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, that's interesting. Who's the most interesting person? Uh, yeah, yeah. Who the most interesting person is, oftentimes not maybe the most famous person, but there are people that you're just so interested in. Like when you meet right. the people that when you were a kid, they're like your heroes. Man. You know, that's that's really awesome. So like being able to meet those people and then uh but I didn't have enough time to like sit down with them, but like I got to meet Kelly Slater, who's like the best surfer ever. That was fucking awesome. And uh I'm trying to think, like, even just meeting like your heroes in comedy, meeting like a Chris Rock, who's just fucking sick. You know, I've had an opportunity to sit down and speak to everybody that's alive who has influenced me in a major way. Isn't that crazy? Every wow. single one. Yeah. From Arsenio Hall to Judy Bloom to Jay Z to you know Minister Farrakhan. Like I've had and, and like I've had the opportunity to sit down and like really not just talk to these people on air, but talk to them off air. Like you know, like I I mean when I say every single one. Every single one. Judy Bloom is, she's always been interested in me just because of her work, but to actually sit down with her, yeah. but then to actually have a relationship with her, for her to call me a friend, for me to call her a friend, like, yeah. God damn, like, that's like, what is life? Yeah. Michael Blue was great. Just to be able to sit down with like a political operative. <laughs> 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 what is that? He's what? talking about me. That was wildly obvious. Wait, why? What is that one? Wait, I don't understand. I want to say what to this one. I can't figure it out. Yeah, Michael blew your back out. Oh. <laughs> you I, do that. I couldn't figure this one out. Get the, you just wanted to hear some dick jokes. You just, you just wanted to hear somebody say they blew your back out. Alex. What does that even mean? Alistar Ken Ross says, Charlotte said, even with money you weren't cared for at birth, would you ever elaborate? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that was crazy. I have yeah, no idea what you're wild. talking about. Even with money, you weren't careful. I don't know what you're this talking about. This next one is good, though. T.A. Gun DSS <laughs> with the good says. Oh, this guy's Mexican, by the way. Shout out him. Know, this guy is so stereotypical Mexican. He is. Vato. This, What's this, up, Vato? Either this is a fake... Page, yeah. this is guy is so Mexican. This is Letty Martinez's brother. Yeah. All right, we're gonna read it as him. Uh, what's up? Oh, okay, what is, orale, orale, ho, so your what friend. What is OHK? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've never seen the one a Mexican okay. spell it out. Okay. Your friend is beat up by a by a gay man. Does that make him gay? I'm talking about fully gay. He putting for reason. I'm talking about fully gay. <laughs> no, that does not make him gay because I'm gay men are men. Unless they identify as a Libra, but if you gay men, <laughs> but if you're, but gay men, gay men are men, bro. Nah, nah, if you get beat up by a gay dude, that's not what happens after you get beat up. 
<laughs> yeah, you're you're you a little up, less straight. Yeah, what you gonna do? A little less straight. But here's the thing yeah. about here's the thing about getting beat up by what? a gay man. That he could suck you and you could do nothing about it. If nobody that sees so it, crazy. when he goes around, he goes, y'all beat that motherfucker up. I beat, I beat, I beat that motherfucker up. I beat that Dude. shit up. Motherfucker's like, oh shit. I beat his ass. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I beat his People ass. People gonna think you got fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy is bragging yep. about beating your ass. I mean, there's really nothing you could do. Once a gay guy beats you up, he could just dock in your foreskin and you got to take it. Dock in your foreskin? <laughs> What's in your foreskin? <laughs> <laughs> so, what? <laughs> Get this shit, what? <laughs> yeah, he could dock in your foreskin, bro. I'm not asking. I'm not, I don't care. You just ask. Nope. So now you're going to find <laughs> out. <laughs> hey, this is Blake three times. This is a nice horror movie for you right now. You've been thinking here? about this for months. When a guy has foreskin and another guy doesn't, he takes his dick and he puts it inside Ew. the foreskin. Oh, what? Yo, no, I believe I'm Charlotte. What? I'm leaving. No, I'm leaving. I'm seeing that somewhere. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. No, I'm not trying. I'm I promise you, I've seen that somewhere. Why did somewhere. you see it? I saw that. So it's a movie or something that shows that shit, yo. Stop watching that Sasquatch shit. <laughs> 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 you gotta chill out, man. I'm telling you, man. It's like Voltron. It's like they put their dicks together and they get like some type of powers. Yeah. You what are you that? watching? <laughs> Two dicks. No, we know what it is. Two foreskins. We're under. <laughs> why are you watching it? You said what? Why are you watching? I don't it? know. I am gay. I am Charlemagne. <laughs> 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 You know what you call? You know what you call? You know what you call two uncircumcised dicks? What is that? Eight. I don't get it. Four plus four equals eight. Oh, bro! bro. <laughs> this guy's All right, bro. Oh, God. Workshop. 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 Yeah. Nah, no, let me tell you something. It I'm not even joking rocking. when I say this. The New York... First of all, that's my first WNBA game, I believe. No. Have I, nah, I've been to a WNBA game before. I think you went to the college one. I think you went to... Yeah, I, think the, I, was, yeah, I went to women's college basketball. That was my first WNBA game. That shit was rocking. Man. Like, the energy in there, and yo, they was balling. Like, <laughs> was sitting by me, right? <laughs> you can believe this. Believe who I'm talking about. <laughs> sitting by me with her fiancé. Heckling the fuck out of that Las Vegas Aces. Because we're sitting right behind the Aces. They're Liberty fans. Boy, somebody from the Aces is like, shut the fuck up, ho, before we get you motherfucking kicked out this bitch. Wow. Right? So <laughs> Beyonce goes, bitch, who the fuck you talking to? I'm not even joking. All It was three Aces on the bitch. All of them at the same time. You bitch! <laughs> I was like, oh shit! This real housewives. Right, 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 right. So then this one dude, right? You know New York City. Nah, yo, we in New York, yo. <laughs> they, they told me. Just, nah, they need to remember they in New York, yo. They in New York, right? So I tell the dude, I go, hey, I just want you to know that and her fiance, they Celtics fans, they Patriots fans, they Red Sox fans. They don't give a fuck about this New York shit. He was like, Oh, word. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> so, I said New York is really the most New York place ever. New crazy. York is New York for real. New York, whatever you see about New York in movies or anything else, and you know what really brings it up? <laughs> Sports. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Sports bro. culture is the only thing keeping New York culture alive, bro. We would fake care about sports the moment we get to the playoffs. We oh, yeah. care. Like, it's crazy. It was sold out. I know. <laughs> Yeah. Like it was, and, and, and it was mad people at the Liberty game. I'm talking about Carmelo and uh, Cayenne was there. Uh, I saw Carrie Champion there. Alicia Keys was there. Uh, uh, Colin Kaepernick and Nessa was there. Gail King was there. Robin Roberts was there. Wow. Uh, what's the dude? I would forget the white guy. <laughs> what's his name? He goes to a lot of games. He's an actor. Mm. Robert Jason? De Niro? Nah. Jason Bateman? Nah, not Jason Bateman. Jason Statham? 
Nah, man. Um, Jason, uh, lick a dick 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 a <laughs> oh man! End the okay. podcast, yeah. Let's end on this. We got to end on this one. Go, Brian Roller Seven Ten says, "Is it bad for a stud to pay for pussy?" <laughs> I mean, they got one. Why are you paying for one? This why the brilliant is. It's the fucking brilliant. Is. I don't want nobody listening to us who don't listen to us. Okay, you know, I think we got. I think we got to start the pot with that question. Yeah. <laughs> You've just been listening to yeah. brilliant is for the past eleven years. That is who we are. <laughs> that right there, Brian. I fuck with you, man. That is facts, though. Is it bad for a stud to pay for pussy? I mean, they got one. Why are you paying for one? Because you can't eat it. You can't eat your own. Ooh. That's what. That's something we don't never ask studs. Yeah, what do you do to the prostitute? No, I'm saying we don't <laughs> ask studs. How do we know that some people just simply don't like the taste of pussy? Oh, they might just like to taste the pussy. Yeah, like it's cilantro or whatever. Yes. Yeah. They might just like the taste of it. You you, you going you ain't sitting around doing this. I mean, we smell it. We go like that. We smell our balls. You don't think that they smell their vaginas? I'm sure they smell it, but they're not like putting their fingers in it and then licking their fingers. No, but they'll take out a tampon and just put it around their rearview mirror like a little. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Like, like, like a little scent. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yo, that, that gotta, you gotta make that merch, yo. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have merch that looks like a used tampon that you can put on your fucking mirror. That is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit. You're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.